It's been a punishing journey to the Georgia Dome for each one of these teams, from blistering summer afternoons to the frosty nights of fall and every temper tantrum nature could dream up along the way. Man, where did this wind come but from? But teams at this level don't even notice the weather. You'll never find quit in their dictionary. They've been up before daybreak, busting at well past dark, hitting the same hundred yards over and over and over. And for what? A few shining moments of Friday night glory? Not hardly. These teams are in it to win it. The whole thing, and this is their ultimate chance. When we say the stakes couldn't be higher, we mean it. This is the final countdown. Hope you're ready to find out who has what it takes to earn the title champion. It's the Buford Wolves and the St. Pius Golden Lions next. Time to play some football. That's a championship team right there. It's a hot time for Inside the big top, it is time for championship six of seven here on championship weekend for the Tommy Gillibo GHSA football championships. It's time to take a look in the quad A class. Buford coming in on a 39 game win streak at 14 and 0 out of region eight. St. Pius coming in with a record of 12 and one out of region seven, a rematch from two years ago. I'm John, this is Chuck. We're your tag team for the Quad A Championship. And if the St. Pius Chaplain said the 11th commandment was to get to the dome, the 12th <laughs> commandment is to make sure you hang on to the football because these, Chuck, are two teams that really like to run the football. You're exactly right. We talked about ground and pound in the pregame, and it's really important. When you look at Buford, they want to hammer the rock. That's who they are. They're going to play big boy ball. And remember, the triple option of St. Pius is carrying them to 12 straight wins. So got to watch out. Both of them love to run the ball. Whoever runs the ball today, I best today, I believe is going to win. St. Pius, though, when they're going up against Buford, they're going to have some biggins, and I mean B-I-G apostrophe U-N-S <laughs> up front that they're going to have to go up against. Well, you're exactly right, and when you think of Isaac Nauta and you think of some of the guys they have, Quay Piku, I mean, this is a dynamic Buford defensive line that has studs all across the board. Quay Piku on your left, Shug Frazier, even larger than Piku on the right. Frazier, one of the most sought after juniors in the country as Buford breaks out the alternate dress whites for championship Saturday. On the flip side though, when Buford runs the football, you know, you've got all that action going on with St. Pius. When they're running it, it's all Reed Egan, and it's going to be him that's going to be the catalyst. Right, and Reed Egan, he's going to have to make the right decisions. Anytime you play in an option, the quarterback is, he's the epicenter. He's the brains of the offense because he has to make the right decisions, whether on the dive, whether the keep, or the pitch. And you see Reed Egan right there passing. It's probably the only time that we're going to see St. Pius passing the football, the third member of our broadcast team here for the Quad A Championship, Sam Crenshaw. Sam, what's the early word? John and Chuck, of course, we talked with Coach Paul Standard. He knows his team may have a bit, a bit of a disadvantage going into this game, but this week he maintains his sense of humor. He said, tires. Must let the air out of the tires, basically let the air out of things and try to slow down Buford that way. He also says, hey, my defensive, my defensive uh, side is so small, maybe we can smuggle a 12th or maybe 13th guy onto the field. He also says the GHSA maybe should put a weight limit on the offensive line for Buford. They are massive. And when I saw him at practice this week, Chuck, I told him you're going to be working the broadcast. He said, Sam. You think Chuck will suit up for a couple of players? I'm on my way, Sammy. I'm on my way. <laughs> How much eligibility way. does this gladiator have? That's the big question when it comes to this quad A championship game. And these two teams met just a handful of years ago. It was a 10-3 game. I don't think it's a stretch to call this David and Goliath, but David knew where to throw the stone. Well, you're exactly right. And the comparisons to David and Goliath are exactly perfect for this game. St. Pius. They're undersized, they're undermanned, and, but the thing that they do have, they believe in each other, they believe in the system, and that's really important because Coach Standard talks about team first, and that's what it's going to take today to upset Buford. Paul Standard, the alum of St. Pius. There he is right there, no stranger to playing in a game 15, 14th year, 129 and 43 for the head coach of the Golden Lions as he brings them back in to play the last game of the year, this time in Quad A. On the flip side, you got the Buford Wolves. There's Jess Simpson. You look at his career record, 10th season, 137 and 8 at Buford. 
two of those games were a forfeit a couple of years ago. So you think about the dominance that Buford has had in the last decade and a half as a football program. They have had an amazing run. The elephant in the room is can they finish the drill one more time? Once again, there are the Buford Wolves coming out in the dress whites. First time that they've broken out this uniform under the dome. And the biggest question, Chuck, you're ranked top five, you're ranked top ten nationally. There's your series history, the last meeting. In the 2012 finals, it was 10-3, but it was because St. Pius held on to the football. The only problem was they couldn't get it into the end zone. A Joshua Thomas run late gave him the 10-3 win. A lot of pressure. Who's got the most pressure today? Is St. Pius playing with uh, house money here? Well, I, I think both of them have pressure. Anytime you're in a championship game, they're both expected to come in here and be quad A champs. But as far as an individual's concerned, I'd say number 18, Reed Egan, the quarterback for St. Pius, because you're going against a defense that has averaged the last nine years nine defensive, I mean, nine all-state type of players, you know, and I, I think there's pressure on both sides, but, you know, everybody expects Buford to come in here and just be Buford and win, so I think there's pressure there, too, particularly if they get off to a slow start. Buford won the toss. They deferred to the second half, so they will kick off to St. Pius, and the Golden Lions will be on offense first. It's time for your Go Build Georgia kickoff. Learn a skill, build a career. Do it now at GoBuildGeorgia.com. Matthew Bonnady is putting the football there on the way. Championship six of seven. That's going to go into the end zone for an immediate touchback. So St. Pius will start at the 20-yard line. There's Reed Egan, the junior, 6'1", 175. You won't see a lot of heavyweights. You're going to see a lot of middleweights and some light heavies when it comes to breaking down the, the weights here for St. Pius. Completes about two-thirds of his passes on the year, but most of the action is going to go on the ground. You divide 62 into 15. That's four passes a game. Two years ago, St. Pius in the final had some change-ups, throwing on first and second down to kind of get the Buford defense back on their heels a little bit. We'll see what happens here. Motion up high. Sure enough, play action. First down. Egan winding up. Wide open. Big game. 50 into Buford territory. And they're going to call him out of bounds at the 39. Gain of 41 on the completion. Off the top to Ransom Klinger. Well, you just dialed it up. That was a good call. John you talked about coming out and throwing early. No one expected it. Nice job by Reed Egan getting his Feet set, flash, and pass. Everybody expected run, but nice surprise, nice start by St. Pius coming out throwing a deep corner route. Steven Reese ends up knocking him out of bounds. There's Klinger right there, the junior. St. Pius has given themselves a lot of room here. Nine seconds in with a big completion. Triple option set. Egan on the dive. Goes to the third in the pitch. Couple of yards there for Klinger on first down. Let's take a look at the St. Pius offensive start is brought to us by our friends at Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. Tackle to tackle, the biggins are on the left-hand side. Chad Nelson at 250, Luke Stokes at 225. Calm Boyer at 180, that is not a misprint. Calm McNulty, Eric Long, tackle to tackle. Specialties, Connor Hild at 180, Joey Connors. Dalton Wilson, the fullback at 225. We've seen Klinger get into it already. Cameron Fannin could see a lot of action at tight end at 220 pounds in the passing game should St. Pius elect to do it. Game now, at three, and which now is what they're looking for. Buford has to respect the pass. Looks like a delay call for St. Pius. Delay a game on the offense. Five drop penalty, keep first down. There's your official, Bill Sulter, the man in the wide hat. He'll be talking to us on the microphone all day. It's Paul Standard. One great component in strength of this offense is number 42, Dalton Wilson, the fullback. Anytime you play in the triple option, he is the sledgehammer. He's the one that everything's set up off of that dive play, and it's going to be interesting to see how often they get a chance to go to it. Five 
25 yard penalty back to the second and 12. Play action one more time. Rolling near side, wide open in coverage. Is it there? In and out of the hands of Klinger trying to go to the near side this time. It was there, just in and out of his hands, incomplete. Third down. Well, again, good job by St. Pius coming out, doing a half roll, moving the pocket a little bit, taking the pressure off of Reed Egan. Floats it a little bit. A little error got up under it, but nice play. But what that does, it sets up now Buford has to respect the passing game because it can happen. Nice wrinkle early on by the St. Pius offense. So let's see what they dial up here. Third and 12 of one minute, one second in. St. Pius with the big pass play to get him into Buford territory. Five yard penalties backed him up. Once again, rolling the pocket. Egan gets rid of it. One hopper incomplete at the 33, so it'll be fourth down. Incomplete to Brennan Garrison. Let's take a look at the Buford Wolves defense that St. Pius is going to have their hands full with all day. Once again, brought to us by our friends at Regions Bank. Nada, Paku, Shug Frazier. We talked about the middle two in the open. Tyler Shipman on the right-hand side. Linebacking core, Austin Smith, Connor Houston, Joshua Thomas. Defensive backs, Martin Mangrum, David Curry. Yes, that's Buddy's son, Stephen Reese. You can't miss him with the flowing locks, number five, and Brandon Mangrum. One end to the other for Buford. St. Pius set to punt. Up in the air. Good angle punt. And it will go out of bounds at the 14. 27-yard punt, no return. It's a nice punt. Now you got a transition here, and it's interesting to see what, how Buford's going to come out. We know they like to pound the ball also. We talked about their philosophy. Do they come out now and possibly try to catch St. Pius off guard? We'll see here. There's Luke Humphrey, 72 of 129. Six foot, 150 pounds. He is the one who's going to drive it for Buford today. Looking for the signal from the far side. Muddle huddle. Let's see if they do a quick snap here. Toss to the back, the 10, maybe the 12 or 13 yard line. Ball's out. Brennan Fitzpatrick with the tackle. Let's see what happens. St. Pius football. Huge early break for the Golden Lions deep in Buford territory. Joey Connors, let's see what happened here. There's the toss. Looking for it. Joey Connors with the strip and the grab. And Buford has tremendous field, the field position given up. St. Pius at the 13. Rip and strip. That was textbook technique. Connors looking for a hole, doesn't get much, running into the meat of that Buford defense. Maybe lost a half a yard. So Buford back on defense quickly. St. Pius has to convert these opportunities. They can't leave points off the scoreboard. Yeah, Buford has to respond. It's called sudden change. When things change abruptly, your defense a lot of times Defense has come out, they're not quite ready, but in this sudden change situation, it's important for Buford to, to try to limit it to a three-point opportunity for St. Pius. Loss of about a half a yard. I try to throw the ball here. I, I try that same route they've been throwing, the corner route. Backs in the eye. Even Handy keeping his hands on the football. And we're going to see a lot of that gentleman today, 18, Isaac Nada. Playing both ways, defensive end and tight end, one of the most sought-after tight ends in the country. And here's the pressure. Does a good job. Gets an influence down block by the offensive guard. Keeps his shoulders square to play sideline to sideline. Nice work. Big kid, strong, explosive. Listed 6'4", 244. He'll probably add another 15 to 20 pounds when he gets to the next level in the next year and a half. Let's see what St. Pius can do here on third and 12. Coming up on three minutes gone in the first quarter. Egan, big hole. Is he going to get close? He gets inside the 10 down to about the 8. Had to get to the 3 for a first down. Let's take another look. Connor Houston, number 17, is him and Nada stay in the backfield. Too much pressure. Smart job by Reed Egan. 
taking what you can get, not making a, a, a bad decision on throwing it in the coverage. 26 yard field goal attempt here for St. Pius. Michael Matthews, the senior. Try to put his right foot in the football for the first points on the game, and he got it. Had a bit of a screwball effect on it. Started out wide to the left, but then corrected itself. First three points on the board go to St. Pius, three and a half minutes in. And with those first three, we're going to take our first break. St. Pius striking first, taking advantage of a strip by Joey Connors. Golden Lions up three when we come back. The GHSA Championship is made possible in part by Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, lighting the way. Technical College System of Georgia, learn more, earn more. Cigna, together all the way. And viewers like you, thank you. The GHSA would like to thank the Georgia Farm Bureau. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome. Three and a half minutes gone, first quarter. Buford makes the first mistake. To be more accurate, St. Pius makes a, a play. big strip and made yep. a play. Gets points on the board. Obviously, Paul Standard wanted seven, got four less than that, but he strikes first. Yeah, and I mean, that's what you want to do. Anytime you're the underdog, you got to make plays. You can't sit around and wait. I like what Joey Connors did. He ripped the ball. He created that, so he didn't wait around for it just to for a fumble and and anytime like I said when you're the underdog you got to come in and make your own breaks and St. Pius made their own break on that first series. You saw the scoring drive brought to us by our friends at TCSG the Technical College System of Georgia TCSG learn more earn more four plays four yards and almost as important eight up two minutes and nine seconds. And that's exactly right you know and they want to keep the ball out of this Buford offense's hands because they put up big time points and they're averaging what, 44 points this year and they're putting up big time numbers they rush for well over 250 yards a game you keep them off the field but they're going to have to play some defense if they're going to win a championship today but they've already won the first round swung to the football nothing new for St. Pius defensively kick just inside the end line so it's going to be run out Went out to just shy of the 30-yard line. And that's where Buford will take over. Evan Cooper with the return. Nice run by Evan Cooper. I like how he came out of when he got the ball, John, downhill. I'm coming right at you. That's one of the keys to being a great kickoff returner is we don't need all that dancing and all that. Take it right downhill, go north and south, be explosive. So let's see what Luke Humphrey can do here on the second opportunity on offense for Buford. 824 for the first. Buford on a 39 game win streak going up against St. Pius. Hand off to the tail. Not a whole lot for Joshua Cooper. Maybe a yard. Let's take a look at the Buford offense. Brought to us by our friends at Regions Bank. Regions Bank, it's time to expect more. And there's your line. Polino, Shane Robinson, Ennis Claude, Cooper Simpson. Yes, one of the sons of Jess and Hunter Holland. Claude 304 is the biggest on that line. There's David Curry. You're going to see some names twice. Joshua Thomas, Jordan Perlotti, one of the best fullbacks in the state of Georgia. Aaron Hour and Nada at tight end at 6'4", 244. Quick snap, Humphrey rolling out in the flat. We got a flag back at the 23, so let's see what happens here. Pass to Evan Cooper, but it might be heading backwards. Illegal shift, Buford. Jess Simpson shaking his head last week against Cartersville in the semifinals on GPB. Nine first half penalties. Illegal shift on the offense. Five yard penalty, repeat second down. Uncharacteristic of a Buford coach team and Jess Simpson. And he simply said, that's not Buford football. And he doesn't want that to show up today. You don't, you don't want that to happen here in this zone. Because the more you back up, the more you give St. Pius the opportunity for a closer field. Cooper in motion. Fake the jet sweep. Flag. Looks like it's going to come back regardless of what Luke Humphrey did. Keep the clock moving. Nine defenders in the box that time for St. Pius. They're going to make 
Buford have to throw the ball or either run through that wall, one or the other. Sorry, that was Brett Shepard at quarterback, 14, the junior, 6'4", 197. And we're heading backwards. That's two. Interested party there, seeing what to do now. Looks like the personnel change they're bringing in. Receivers going to spread it out. Probably put two, three wides out, try to open up a little bit. Try to get a short screen. Holding. That's what you want. Only out there. Pete second down. Second and long. What you think about right now, if you're St. Pies, you got to think screen, quick screen, any kind of play that way or slant. Luke Humphrey back in at quarterback, wing left. Second and 23, they're going to run to the short side to the corner. Ball popped out, but it popped out of bounds. It'll stay with Buford, but the ball's to the 24-yard line. Let's take a look at the Golden Lions defense that has been flying to the football so far in the first four minutes and a half. Once again, brought to us by our friends at Regions Bank. Chris Benjamin, the biggest at 250. Andrew Jacone, Kyle Lewis, and Chris Braswell at 200 pounds end to end. There's your linebackers, Whitlark, Dalton Wilson, and Brian O'Reilly. O'Reilly played two years ago as a sophomore. Nick Spear, Joey Connors, Brennan Fitzpatrick, Grant Holloman, Joey Connors was the one who got the strip and rip and grab for that first turnover that led to St. Pius' first three points. Third and 17. They're going to try to work power up the middle, right tackle. Don't get a whole lot there. Evan Cooper. And Buford's going to have to punt. Yeah, they run their inside dive. Doesn't get anything. Bodies everywhere. St. Pius scrapping, scratching, clawing, holding that line of scrimmage. Excellent job so far. Surprised Buford that time didn't take a shot on throwing the ball a little bit. Had two downs, long yardage. But that's their personality. They're going to pound and they're going to ground and keep pounding. Low snap. Matt Bonnetty's almost had it tipped. So fire. Play right there, everybody waving themselves as far away for St. Pius as humanly possible. Ball down to the 31-yard line, 43-yard punt with the roll, 44, no return. You know when you see helium going into a balloon yep. and it just starts getting bigger and bigger and swelling up? That's what's happening right now for St. Pius with their confidence right now in the first quarter here in the, this Quad A championship. That's what you're seeing. They're feeling confident, and that's what you want to do, just keep doing your job and you feel more comfortable saying, you know what? We can play with these guys. Now let's see what St. Pius does on this particular possession. Their third of the first quarter. All at the 31 yard line. They've used play action to keep Buford on their heels. So let's see if they keep working wide or if they're going to go back to their game. Triple option. There's your look. Dive. Got blown up after about a yard. And we talked about Quay Paku in the open. And there's the first impact that Quay Paku has had on that defensive line. Well, it gets great penetration there. Quay shoots right through the around the guard, and he just, that's a decision that Reed Egan wants to make. You either want to hand it off, he was going to keep it that time. And uh, nice job by Paku getting penetration. But um, Buford's in a 4 4 front right now almost almost really a four or five pretty it's much up. daring St. Pius to pass daring them to pass almost the wing T set here Connors in motion we got whistles so it was once again a rollout at least that's what that look was timeout St. Pius so St. Pius is going to think about it here on second and 11 551 for the first and we've seen early on that them rolling out the pocket. Let's take a look at St. Pius's history and what Paul Standard and the Golden Lions are chasing today. Region champs in Region 6 Quad A. It's their seventh overall. We talked about that 2012 game. It's a 3-3 game going into the fourth quarter. Joshua Thomas scoring on a fourth down. Quarter finalists, better five of the last six years, 1968 state champs with head coach George Malouf. So that's what they're chasing first state title since 1968. And you have the George Maloof coaching tree. You have his sons Keith and Kevin. You have Ed Dudley, who's now the head coach at Carrollton. You have Paul Stander, who's coaching at his alma mater. Now, Ed Dudley, he's a riot. He's one of my all-time <laughs> great coaches. 
friends to this day. I mean, I was actually in this class back in the day. What was it? Was it social studies, science? But I mean, a great coach. Carrollton's got a great coach. Good guy. Funny as it is, I don't know what, man. I, I love him, though. But it's interesting. St. Pius start out 0-2 this year, and to, to do what they've done is, you know, quite amazing. It's, it's a credit goes out to Coach Standard. They made a conscious effort to change things up at quarterback. Joey Connors was returning as a junior. And with everything keying on Joey Connors, they had to get Connors active in the offense. So Coach Standard calls Joey into the office on a Saturday morning. And he said, we have to make changes. And Joey said, OK, Coach, whatever we have to do to make the team win, whatever I have to do. And right now, Joey Connors is working his tail off at tailback. And Reed Egan is the quarterback. And we've seen what Connors can do defensively already. And we're seeing what St. Pius has been able to do offensively with that change all the way back in week two. Well, great decision by the coach. And when you start 0-2, and, and I think it was the loss to Woodward September 15th, you have to shake the team up. And you got your quarterback, who was the fastest guy on the team. She's going to find more options for him. Smart move moving Reed Egan to QB. St. Pius has coming after the timeout. Play action, Egan being chased. Big hole, 30. Cuts it in, 35 to the 39-yard line. Creates a third down and short yardage. Big scramble there by Reed Egan. Well, nice job by Reed Egan. Too much pressure on him to even think about throwing the ball. But I'm going to tell you, nice tackle by Connor Houston, number 17. Finishing up, Connor has 12 offers, 6'3", 224, 60 tackles on the year. If he doesn't make that tackle, that's the first down. We saw him send three. And Egan escaped the pressure, coming up on five minutes to go, first quarter. St. Pius leading Buford 3 nothing. Joey Connors inside nothing. Maybe. He got close. Extra effort. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Where's the spot? It was close. And it's a big decision depending on how close it is. Well, you got to punt this if he doesn't get it. You got to play defense here. We're going to measure. It's close. Okay, here's Connors. You see him go to the top of the screen. Cuts it inside. Grabbed by Joshua Cooper. Leans forward. So let's see where the spot is. Nice block that time by number 31, Ranson Klinger, for St. Pius on offense. There's Daryl Miller getting involved. There it is, half the football. Great look by Daryl down there on the field. What do you do here, Nelly? I, you got to punt it. If I'm the coach, I'm Coach Standard, I got to punt it. But I will say this, think about it now. This team has only had one negative carry from the fullback position. Dalton Wilson, 178 carries, only one negative carry for loss in an entire season, which is amazing. That's your bell cow right there now. See what happens here. Fourth and one. This could be a big morale boost early. They need half the football from their own 41. All those dress whites in there, and we've got a timeout called by St. Pius. They're going to think about it. Well, they saw that big old Suge Frazier over there looking like Stone Mountain. <laughs> there's only something. Suge Mountain. Suge Mountain. There's only <laughs> Man, these kids have gotten big. Big Suge Frazier is big guy. 6'3", 332 pounds, a junior. Mm -hmm. And you want to stay away from him. He's well, a, he's a big timer. Paku at 260, Isaac Nada at 244, Frazier at three and a third spins, Tyler Shipman on the right side at 229. He's the one who weighs the least. But well, look at you got 41, Jordan Perlotti. Right. They got a big group. There's no other way to put it. And they just rotate, they bring in fresh bodies, and that's one of the benefits that Buford has. But let me just talk about St. Pius, the mentality here. If I'm St. Pius mm -hmm. and I'm those kids out there and I'm them coaches, I don't care who Buford has on defense. That's got to be your mind frame. We're here for a reason, too. So as much as those guys are big, you want to go after them. It doesn't matter whether they're bigger or small. You're in a championship game. You want to play to win. 
So let's see how many bodies of the 22 are going to be within the first five yards of the line of scrimmage here. Buford has nine up tight. St. Pius has all 11 up tight. Heavy package, near side, and second effort. Got it, he breaks free. 40-30, caught with the ankles and out of the tackle. Touchdown on a fourth and one, 60 yards, St. Pius. And that is the danger of stacking the box with all of those bodies. Somebody gets through and you're gone. Fullback dive, Dalton Wilson. We just talked about one negative play. Think about this, which is an amazing stat. 178 carries by the two fullbacks, only one negative loss all year. That's money for them. They, they can count on that. Bounces off of the first impact, gets to the second level, and he's out the door. PAT hugs the left upright, and it's good. St. Pius again. Shining brightly early on. Here's another look from behind. Reese missed the first tackle. And there's the second tackle missed right there by Martin Mangrum and into the end zone goes Dalton Wilson. There's the bounce, there's the clearance. And Mangrum had him at the 15, but he stepped out of the tackle. Touchdown, St. Pius. There's your bounce. Well, I want to focus on this block here, Chris Benjamin. He's the one who springs the fullback, Dalton Wilson, Nice blocking down block for Chris Benjamin. He comes in the game. He's not a starter. He comes in the game, makes a great down block. And that's what this is all about. It's going to have to be all hands on deck. That's what coaches always taught me. So your backups have to play a big role when you want to win a championship. Nice block by the offensive line. Luke Stokes, all the guys, Chris McNutty at right guard. Scoring drive brought to us by our friends at TCSG, the Technical College System of Georgia. Four plays, 69 yards, most of them on that run right there for 217. Pooch kick picked up at the 30. St. Pius in pursuit. Not a whole lot on the return. Get you four. And let's see what Buford can do on this round. Well, if I'm Buford, I still stay in my offense. I still try to run it, but I, I might spread it out just a little bit. Look at those numbers right there. As many yeah. total yards forward as you have backward. Well, this Buford offense has outscored opponents 584 to 72. They're not used to being in this situation. There's your pressure early. Great thinking yep. by Reed Egan to get clear. And that's what set up the plays. So St. Pius right now looking pretty solid on the roll. Find your big tight end. That's the best way to do it. Nada. Nine, maybe ten. First down. Move the sticks, perhaps. Depends on the spot. It's going to be close. Up. Oh, that was a PAP. Play action pass. Nice counter on first down by the Buford offense. Change the pace a little bit. Now, what happens on St. Pius, you got to respect now that they have the ability to throw the ball. It's, it's out there now. They gave, him, they gave him ten, so it's first down. Coming up on four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Great defensive play by Joey Connors. Sets up the first three. And going on on a fourth and one at your own 40. And looks like another motion penalty. Yep, false start. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Big first down. Third penalty of the first quarter for Buford. Caleb Auer. One of the two hours on the roster is brother Aaron. Neil Hour, one of the assistants right there. There's your flinch. And that's what caused it. You saw the St. Pius players pointing it out. One of the two hours, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, that Caleb, he's had a nice year so far. Dead Neil, part of the coaching yep. staff here. Humphrey. Is that technically a shuttle pass? Yes or no? They call it deflected. We're going to call it an incomplete pass. Once again, pressure coming in. And Luke Humphrey was surprised to see someone in 
a dark jersey coming at him very quickly. Well, if you're St. Pius, there's a, only one receiver spread out, so you're going to play eight, nine guys in the box. They're playing a safety over the top in the corner in front of the receiver of Buford, and I'm, they're sending eight defenders every time, and when you play action pass, it takes time to develop on a play action pass. Play action pass plus a blitz a lot of times don't work, particularly when it's eight guys that are coming from St. Pius' standpoint. Chris Braswell was the one who came in clean that time for St. Pius. Five on the line of scrimmage. Fake the sweep to, Jeff, to uh, Cooper, and it looks like a run is done. Brett Shepard is going to go the distance. 61 yards, Buford on the board. Nice design that time by the Buford offense. Pulls it back out and reads the defensive end. Inside zone takes that's quarterback power. Touchdown that replay brought to us by our friends in the technical college system of Georgia. And there's Brett Shepard on the run. That was the design run by Brett Shepard. It's a nice little wrinkle they've added. Take Luke Humphrey out. Matt Bonadies with the PAT. That is good. Buford on the board. We've seen platoons from Buford at quarterback in the past. We saw them at Montgomery Van Gorder a couple of years ago being a part of the platoon system. And here's your look. Well, what you notice here, great block in here. Well, great block in here. We've got some few difficulties on the screen okay, go here. Go ahead and roll the play here. Let's roll see what we got. There's Shepard. And the hole initially was at left guard, left tackle, and they found that bubble, and that's where he went. Right. Nice job by Shane Robinson, and that's what we were going to talk about. Shane Robinson, Nick Polino, a North Carolina commit, do a good job getting bodies on the body and springing the quarterback. And there's Brett Shepard, scoring drive, brought to us by our friends at TCSG. Three plays, 66 yards, only took 23 seconds off the clock. But that's what Buford can do. Buford can come at you very quickly. And they can come at you in waves if you're not careful. So it'll be interesting to see how St. Pius can respond to that very, very quick score. And the game so far has been big plays. You've got the 60-yard touchdown run for St. Pius, and then Shepard responding with one of 61 on his own to kind of cancel each other out here. St. Pius leading by three. Bonadies foot into the football, and that's going to go into the end zone. So St. Pius will start at their 20. A lot of possessions here for St. Pius in the first quarter. And that's almost as good as having the football for eight minutes in this offense. Well, it is, and, and that's what happens anytime you run the ball. You control the clock, and this game is gone because both these teams are really running the ball. But I tell you this. Nice response by Buford, because think about it. You're down 10 nothing. Everything's going against you. It's how you respond, particularly in, in situations like that. Fourth possession for Pius here in the first quarter. Let's see how they come out. Wing slot, two offset backs. Take the dive, toss. To Joey Connors trying to get away from the gang of Buford defenders there, maybe a yard and a half. You got a flag on the play as well. Swarming Wolves, Buford. Flag at the 21. So let's see what the man in the white hat has to say. Offensive face mask call. Or a face mask call. A five yard face mask on the offense. That pill is declined. Second down. Let's see what happened. Right, right there. Trying to block on the edge. It's Cameron Fannin. You see right there. He's chasing after Joshua Cooper. Yeah. Looks like he got his hands a little high. And that's why it's a five yard penalty. Yep. Second down and nine. Three and a half and counting here in the first quarter. One set with a couple of yards going. He's crashing off of center and left guard. Big Suge Frazier in the middle does a good job. What's she called Mount Frazier? <laughs> Suge Mountain? Suge Mountain. 
does a great job of shedding the block right here. Excellent work. Dalton Wilson with the carry, hanging on to the football, both hands. Up to the 23-yard line, third down and seven. You see it right now, eight offers on the table, including two big ones here in state. Chuck's Tennessee Volunteers. A lot of folks in this part of the country with some high-powered schools are chasing after Shug Frazier as he heads into his senior season. Four wide in the pattern this time on a third down and seven. Egan dropping, pressure, can't escape at this time. Getting all fired up is Quay Paku, and here's why. Paku almost got blocked into it. Shook Frazier cleaned it all up. So Paku's all fired up. And down there once again, commit. Tennessee, yep. Paku. Quay Paku and Shook Frazier both had great job, did a great job penetrating, getting upfield, winning, just jetting upfield. Nice speed, nice rushes. Off the side of his foot, and it'll go out of bounds at about the 45 yard line. Call it the 46 29 yard punt, no return. Michael Matthews. Buford gets another possession as we're under two minutes to go. Luke Humphrey looking on the wristband. So he'll start the possession. For Jess Simpson, let's see if Buford can do something here. As they were down 10-0. Brett Shepard, a 61-yard run from quarterback. Let's see what Buford can do on their possession here. Humphrey with the toss. Missing the first tackle and getting out of that grip, Joshua, Joshua Thomas. And so Thomas cuts it back inside. He'll get down to the 39-yard line, so second down and three. Well, good job by the Buford offense. Nice work, Joshua Thomas running the ball coming downhill. He's a big-time player, 6'1", 208. Can catch the ball, can run the ball. But they're going to be who they are, and that's what they're going to do, and Buford's going to keep running. They're going to just keep running. 254, 271, 304, 254, and 260. That's five good reasons, and not a 244 is a sixth one. Halfback option wide open. A floater is caught, and Buford pulls something out of the back of the playbook. Aaron Auer, the touchdown pass, and Buford has the lead. So much for running. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent job. Screen pass. Double pass right here, TCSG touchdown replay, learn more, earn more. There's your first pass, and there's your second. Aaron Hour underneath it. The 6'3", 170-pound senior gets the touchdown. Buford with two big plays. He's now back up on top, 14, 10, 68 seconds to go here in the first. Two explosive plays now for Buford to get him back here, taking the lead. And again, when you have a team that traditionally runs the ball, St. Pius had seven, eight men that time looking to stop the run again. That first down run by Joshua Thomas set up the throw, the, the screen, the screen pass, touchdown, now screen pass. There's your first one. There's your second one, Brandon yep. Marsh. Gets the air up underneath it and throws it down to Aaron Hour. That one sign said that number 12 is hot, and here's the reason why. Pass number one, pass number two, and everyone's looking behind them. <laughs> Scoring drive brought to us by our friends at TCSG. We've got to do that a lot this quarter. 46 in two, over 47 seconds. Buford with the four-point advantage after being down 10. And after number 42, Brandon Marsh gets the, gets the rock. He's probably as nervous as anyone out there uh -huh. because he's got a wide open receiver downfield. Just don't want to mess it up. But it was a nice throw. Matt Bonnety is putting the football. Gets a little more air under it. Tackled inside the 15. Great pursuit that time. TD roof. And yes, it is of those roofs. Or roofs, I guess. Is it roofs or roofs? roofs. Well, I mean, plural of roof. Roof. Roofs. roofs. Okay. Roofs. 
Ted Roof's son, one of two on the roster. Then back comes St. Pius for possession number five. 62 seconds for the first. Physical game so far. Both teams like to run like a smash now. See if St. Pius does that on first down. Dive and Kaku comes up big with a bit of a hip toss there for the tackle in the short game. <laughs> They're going to be hard to run against in the middle and when just watch the takedown here. Here, Frazier. And then there you go. That's uh, they're not just laying him down. They're not tucking him in. <laughs> so Shook Mountain started it. Quay Paku with the hip toss finished it. Gain of two. In this particular offense, all St. Pius is looking for is 10 feet every time. Three in the third yard. You do that three times. It's a first down. You keep the football. You move the sticks. Two wide. Joey Connors in motion. Egan looking to roll to his left. He's got to get rid of it in a hurry. There's a lot of white there. Getting rid of it throws it into the turf. TD Roof number 15 gets a nice shot on the quarterback Reed Egan scrambling and when you start scrambling you just never know where those defenders are going to be. He was looking downfield but excellent coverage by the Buford secondary. There's your roll. Escaping dancing four white jerseys coming at him. And it's difficult to square and fire to a receiver as you're heading one direction and he's going the other way. Well, it's hard to throw when you're running for your life. Mm -hmm. But you got to keep your eyes downfield. He did a good job then. You want to be smart, though. Get the ball out of your hands. If there's nothing there, get it out of your hands. Live the fight again. He did him one for his first 441 yards, and it was on that first completion that broke them into Buford territory on the first drive. It was the completion. Let's see what the penalty is. Delay a game on the offense. And we'll back him up five. I wonder what St. Pius is seeing here. It, I'm not exactly sure, but three or four of their passes have been roll. They've been rolling half rolls into the boundary against his throwing motion. In the first play of the game, they rolled to his natural throwing motion to the right, and it was a success. They haven't had much success doing the half roll against his throwing motion to the left. Third down, 13. More, more than likely, this will be the last play of the first quarter. Motion up high, three in the pattern for St. Pius. Egan rolling way wide this time. He's got to get rid of it. They're going to call it a safety, or they're going to spot him at the one. He's at the one. TD Roof and Connor Houston. We talked about his blitzing ability last week against Cartersville. You see it. Egan on the roll, and there's three white jerseys chasing after him in a hurry. Got to tuck that ball away. Reed Egan's lucky he didn't get that. They didn't cause a fumble on that one. He had the ball holding it out there a little bit. A lot of action here in the first 12 minutes. A lot of big plays and a lot of surprises. St. Pius put the first 10 on the board. Buford came back with 14 of their own. We're through with the first 12 minutes. Buford leading in the Quad A Championship second quarter coming your way from the Dome after this on the great GPB. At the heart of our community are the businesses that don't skip a beat. Georgia's electric membership cooperatives stand behind local commerce. Whether keeping farms running or shining a light on new ventures, we bring business, large and small, to our communities. Creating jobs, driving development, supporting dreams. Georgia's EMCs, powering our businesses, lighting the way. Nothing prepares you better for a great career than the technical college system of Georgia. TCSG colleges produce graduates with the knowledge and training today's top employers are looking for. With campuses across Georgia, state-of-the-art facilities, and outstanding instructors with real-world experience, it's the kind of affordable college education that will fast-track you into a rewarding career. We're building a better future for you. Contact the TCSG college in your area today or go to tcsg.edu. Right now, I'm about 100 feet high, traveling at about 50 miles an hour, just thinking about where I should go next. Do you have any ideas? 
visit us on our Georgia Traveler Facebook page. Gotta go! This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. Animal agriculture is important to Georgia. Our farmers work hard each and every day to take care of our animals across this state. Hi, I'm Zippy Duval, President of Georgia Farm Bureau, and we're proud of our partnership with Georgia High School Association. Just as we teach our children to work hard and accomplish goals, we take care of each other like a family. We as farmers across this state love our animals, and we work hard to take care of them too, don't we, Jim? Visit us online at gfb.org. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome. Buford with the first quarter lead 14 to 10 over St. Pius in this big 4A state title match. Now we've talked about how Buford is playing their first season in 4A. They moved up from 3A in the latest reclassification Georgia high school football system. Now we want to know from you which classification Buford was in when they won six of their 10 state championships. Find GPB Sports on Twitter, on Facebook. Let us know which class they were in those years. And the trivia winner will win two tickets to the college football hall of fame in atlanta and it is a dazzling place john yes it certainly is thank you very much grace and chuck you're going to look at the last play of the first quarter and the pressure of that view for defense well exactly pressure bust pipes and what you want to notice here they're getting upfield fast they're, and then they're going to send this outside fourth rusher to come and also make it where the quarterback reed egan cannot get to the edge and there's your look. Egan rolls to his right, and it is waves of white shirts coming after yep. him. Connor Houston's the fifth rusher, so what they're doing is he has coverage responsibility, but the running back stays in the backfield, he's going to come. And that's exactly what happened on that five-man pressure. Now, just as important here is the punt from your one-yard line. Michael Matthews has to be careful with the back foot to make sure that when he catches it, he doesn't step backwards and create an automatic safety for stepping out of bounds. Punts away, low to the 40, picked up 35, 30, big hole in the middle, cutting it to the outside. Angle is there, and touchdown on the punt return for Buford David Curry. But he said his son had some wiggle now, some speed. Excellent run. We saw that wiggle on the punt yep. return. He was trying to figure out where he was going to go when he first got it. And then once he grabbed the football, 40 yards for the score. Matt Bonadies now in for the point after. And Buford has scored 21 in a row. TCSG touchdown replay. Here's the punt. Well, I want you to notice also the great blocking. He fumbles it here, but you're going to also see Jacob Martin, number 20, have a great blocking in to spring him. Gets to the corner, gets in the end zone. Here's your look from the other end zone at it. I want you to keep your eye on number, number 20. Jacob Martin. I just run it. There's your early look. Everyone coming back. All right, it's coming here to the right. You'll see this great block coming up in a second. Right hand side of your screen, right there. There, right there. Excellent job. 21 unanswered for Buford. And they've done it in three minutes and 53 seconds. The Brett Shepard keeper for 61 yards. The Aaron Hour pass from Brandon Marsh. And now the punt return by Curry. So technically only two seconds have run off the clock here. Three minutes and 53 seconds, three scores. And that's what Buford can do. And that also shows what that sack did that put St. Pius on the one yard line that set him back. Gave Buford a nice short field to return the punt from. 
Bonadies foot to the football at the 5, 10, 15, met at the 15, and not much further from there. And look who's in there as part of the pile. Brett Shepard coming in late along with TD Roof. TD Roof, 5'10, 180. Three calls fumbles this year. And here's what it was like on the field. It did. Also, one of the intangibles that we talked about is the ability for Buford to have a dominant special teams. They've had two tackles inside the 20 and a punt return. Let's see what St. Pius does here, first possession of the second quarter. Dive faked, and the pitch is on the floor. Who's got it? Quay Paku, touchdown, Buford. Did I see Quay Piku hit the fullback first? Didn't pick the ball up. I, I'm gonna have to see that replay. See what the multitasking yeah. was. So I, not nine goes nine for six for Buford. They got 27 unanswered points. I know he wasn't doing double duty. Did a good job tackling the fullback. Buford did. Dalton Wilson. They took away that option. You saw Paul Stander talking to Reed Egan there. Flag on the play. This Buford defense has been big time all year. Only giving up 5.5 yards a game. Points a game. 5.5 points a that game. That to climb. Try for point. Mm. We saw him last week against Cartersville in the semifinal on Football Fridays. And Buford in the playoffs has had to come from behind. Marist had an early lead. Mary Persons had an early lead. So it's not uncharacteristic. It's not what you want. Bad snap. Point after is no good. So the margin stays at 27 to 10. Quay Piku is going to look pretty good in that orange and white. All right, here's what happened. Let's see how much multitasking Quay Piku did. He was in, coming in over the A gap. Scramble, scramble, Piku picks it up. Yep, I couldn't see the, the dive from that angle, but. Here's your point after a high snap. Everyone trying to just get Buford away from the football if you're a St. Pius Golden Lion. Grant Holloman there to prevent anything else from happening falling on the football, so St. Pius will get it back. Well, it makes it a 17-point lead. Now at least you get two touchdowns, you get a field goal, you can tie it up. So when the world tilts on you like this, yep. what do you tell people at this point? Who are we? We are a running team, and we have to make yards running the ball. We got to be who we are. And at that point, you got to clear it and move on to the next play. That's it. It's the only thing you can do is clear it. They can't worry about what just happened, the fumble, the offense. What has to happen, Reed Egan has to clear it and come back and get ready for the next play. It's all you can do. So it's simple as clear the mechanism for Reed Egan for the football. Matt Bonadies from the one. Pull up the middle, ball on the floor again. He was hit, the ball just came out of his hands. Initial response is that the ball was down. They're going to give it to St. Pius. You got to keep your composure. You got to fall back on your fundamentals if you're St. Pius. Here's another look from the ground. There's your strip right there. And everyone chasing after the football. Looked like it was Connor Tarleton that got in there to strip it. Now let's see what St. Pius can do from their 16. Joey Connor spakes inside. Egan hangs on to it. Hit to the corner, and they got maybe three that time. With Ransom Klinger again. But, well, that, but that's all you want. And that's all you want. But St. Pius. 
they're going through their progression of the triple option dive quarterback keep pitch and the discipline of Buford on defense right now they're taking away the dive they're hitting the dive every time with Suge Frazier and Quay Piku I'm watching them that time they're going for the fullback every time and they're going to hit Dalton Wilson every time they're going to have St. Pius is going to have to try to create some short passes. Triple option set, second and seven. Dive, faked, pitch to the 20, spin move. And there's Reese with the tackle there. You can't miss him. And this is the kind of pressure that all those white jerseys have been putting on St. Pius all day long. And let's go back in the last drive, Chuck, and that's a lot of pressure. Well, they're getting upfield. They're knocking the. You see what's happening here? Quay Paku, they've been getting upfield. You see the pressure here. Quay does a good job getting upfield, putting pressure on him here. They reduce the quarterback's running lanes. Reed Egan has nowhere to go. And there's the fumble. Bad pitch, which created the ball on the turf, which created the score for Quay Paku. 3rd down, six. Around the edge, head lowered, gets just over the 26-yard line. They're going to run them all the way to the 28, let's say. So it'll still be three short. It'll be fourth down. St. Pius is going to have to punt. And you can't just punt. you got to cover the punt. you got to get downfield. you got to, number one, first is protection. And you got to feather out, meaning spread out on the punt team. And you got to leverage it inside out, but you got to go down there looking to make the tackle because he's going to try to, they're going to try to split the seam again. If I'm David Curry, I'm doing the same thing. No need to reinvent the wheel, but it's imperative that St. Pius does a better job here on the putt team. Let's see what Michael Matthews does when he puts foot into football. Into the air and out of bounds at the 45 yard line. And we've talked about Buford coming in on this 39 game win streak, 32 yard punt, no return. A lot of folks look at Buford as one of the top teams, not just in the state of Georgia, but in the country. And here's why. 10 state titles chasing after their 11th, 13th title game appearance in the last 15 years. 2005 to now, Jess Simpson, 137 and 8. Two of those were in a forfeit a couple of years ago. But the man who laid the groundwork, Dexter Wood, 71 and 4 in his time with Buford from 2000 to 2004. They've had a lot of streaks of championships in a row, and there's a lot of trophies in the trophy case. 39-game winning streak is amazing. Busy six minutes for Buford putting four scores on the board. Great defensive play there. Great saturation that time on the defense by Dalton Wilson. It's a nice job by Dalton Wilson getting off the block. He's had a solid year. The senior has 37 tackles, two interceptions. Played there. some good ball this year. And there's another look at it. Penetration, grab the ankle, don't let go. <laughs> Hold on. Xavier Gant with the carry. We didn't know if Xavier Gant and how much action he was going to be getting. He's been nursing some leg injuries the last couple of weeks, but he got his first carry there, ended up being a loss of one. 9-10 for the first half. Slant route complete, stumbling through it and into the clear, into the second level for the completion. Once again, another pass to Aaron Hour. Well, good job on the slant route. It's a three-step drop. Get it out your hands really fast, and that's what you want to do if you're Luke Humphrey, number three. Interesting technique by St. Pius because they, they're undersized versus the run. They're using a submarine technique. They're diving down at the shins of Buford. We saw that last week against Carterville, but you can't rush the passer when you go to the ground. Grant Holloman had him wrapped up. Hour broke through the tackle, gain of 21. A couple of play fakes on the release, complete inside the 10, dragging tacklers. They're going to give him the eight yard line. TD Roof with the completion and the catch. Excellent throw, excellent catch by TD Roof. Coming right at you, play fake, play fake, and there we go. Sets his feet, gets his elbow directly where he wants to throw the ball. Nice mechanics there by number three, Luke Humphrey. Dalton Wilson, Grant Holloman in on the tackle to try to make sure that the momentum wouldn't go much further than the eight yard line. 
First and goal for Buford coming up on 8.25 for the first. The first half. Power formation for Buford. Evan Cooper on the jet sweep. Does he find the corner? Yes, five, touchdown. Eight yards for Evan Cooper, and it's now 33 points in a row on the board. Here's your touchdown replay from the Technical College system of Georgia. Buford does a good job setting the strength of the receivers to the left. They had a lot of field to the right. Nice setup, nice design, nice run, Evan Cooper. Cooper to the corner, got points on the board. Bonnetty's in for the point after. Better snap this time than the last. Bonnetty's point after is up and good. And Buford is on a roll, 34 points in a row, and we barely had the chance to breathe. 34 to 10, Evan Cooper, the last six on the board for the Wolves here in the second. This moment, getting here took three years of sleepless nights and postponed vacations. Your dad said, play it safe. Your husband kept the faith. But franchising is why you partnered with Regions in the first place. We share your vision for moving forward. And at moments like this, I see. that makes all the difference. Is your business at a turning point? Regions. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome. And yeah, if you read what's on Evan Cooper's mouthpiece, yeah, I'm fast. And he was the end of the drive to prove it, but here's the drive in a nutshell. Yeah, he is fast. Good job right here on the slant route. Nice catch by Curry. Comes out, does a good job also. Again, Luke Humphrey setting his feet, getting the ball out to TD Roof. Fighting hard to take him down. And here's the man who's self-proclaimed fast, Evan Cooper, getting to the corner for the score. Well, so I think it's safe to say that, yes, he is fast. There's your scoring drive brought to us by our friends at the Technical College System of Georgia, 53 and 4 in 103 seconds. And this is probably the slowest that Evan Cooper has been today, right? Yeah, you're exactly right, sitting on the bench, and that's where you want to try to keep him if you're St. Pius. But in a new generation, did I'm you, fast. Did you ever put he, anything like that on a mouthpiece? Not on the mouthpiece, never on the mouthpiece. I, I can't remember many times, maybe if someone was injured, but this is the world of social media, and he knows the cameras are going to be watching him. I ain't mad at him. This is time. Enjoy the moment. After those first 10 points that St. Pius put on the board with the defensive play by Joey Connors and then the other seven points that they put on the board, it has been all Buford in a hurry. Well, it's been fueled by the St. Pius turnovers. They've left the ball on the ground and given Buford easy shots at the end zone. Plus, when you throw in a punt return, the, the biggest way to break a game open is return a punt, and that's what Buford did. 34 points in about seven minutes and 45 seconds. Buford has been putting up some strong numbers, hopping through and clearing the 25 out to the 27. That's where St. Pius will start it up this time. All right. And they needed a little breathing room. Good return that time by Ransom Klinger. All right. Now let me tell you the mind frame of the players right now and the coaches on both sides because it's two different thought processes, processes now. If you're St. Pius, Let's go, guys. We got to push ourselves. Let's do what we do. We got to make a play. We got to score. We got to help our defense. And if you're Buford, let's put the gas down. Let's put the pedal to the metal. Let's try to bury it. That's the mentality. Let's see what happens here. Timeout called for by Buford. The St. Pius was Buford. set to run their offense. And when you talk about things here at Georgia Public Broadcasting, one of the most important things for us is Stop the Drop. Stop the Drop is an initiative dedicated to preventing high school dropouts. We ask students to do their part by finding out how the problem affects their community and preparing a 30-second PSA that tells us all about it. The best PSA, which will be coming up, we'll find out who the winner is in the upcoming tailgate party. It's a $2,500 scholarship. 
Stay tuned to find out when this game is over who our 2014 contest winner is and what ideas they had about how to stop the drop. And if you think that's a little extreme, when you think about it, that's how football is to be played. Mm -hmm. And that's the mentality of both of these teams. Right now, St. Pius, they're in survival. They're scrapping, man. They're, they're sitting right now questioning, you know, were we prepared or, or, or is this play going to work? And on the other side, they're feeling good. Buford's jumping around. They're giddy. But what you got to do if you're St. Pius, just do what you do best, and that's run the ball and use those two or three passes that you used earlier and try to get the ball downfield, but be smart. But you got to have ball security or this game's going to really get out of hand really, really bad. Wing T set. Start things off for St. Pius. Let's see what happens. Jet motion down. Play action. Egan looking. He's going to have to find an outlet. Tries to throw it to Brian O'Reilly. Incomplete over his head. Downstairs to Sam Crenshaw. What's up? John and Chuck, I'm standing in the, behind the end zone here in the direction that Buford has been coming throughout this quarter. It has been something to watch them work, both on the offensive and defensive side. It all starts up front. Everything starts up front for both offensive and defensive units, and the size and speed has reduced anything that St. Pius has tried to do offensively. Just an awesome display, rolling off 34 unanswered. And the size of those lines, you know, we've talked about it. We yep. knew with Shug Mountain and Quaypaku and everybody else there, Penalty was called on Buford, so they're going to move him. Did you call him Suge Mountain? Yeah. <laughs> I like Isn't that. Isn't that what we figured out? That, there's nothing more intimidating than Suge Frazier. The only thing more, bigger than him is Stone Mountain, I believe. Yeah. From a, from a high school D lineman perspective, I'd say. Paul Standard trying to come up with some solutions here. Remember, we're only four minutes into the second quarter. So there's plenty of time. He just has to run through his offense, get some stops, turn it back around, and go. Big hit at the 40. Joey Connors was met right after he got the football, so it was 11 on 11. Austin Smith. I'm liking Quay Paku even more. Uh -huh. He didn't make that play, and I like him be going in that ball, in that ball uniform. Look, he strikes, sheds that block, gets a swim over. Nice job striking blocks. And when you play against the run, you got to strike blocks and get off blocks. Nice work there. St. Pius got their three, second down and seven. Got Wilson behind. Play action. Egan looking. Throws the outlet. Pressure from behind and a big sack. Big sack shit's coming in waves. Tyler Shipman that time. Tyler Shipman. Him and Jordan Perlotti like twins. Same size, number 32, comes off the corner, does a good job. But you got to be smart. There's a clock that's ticking when you're a quarterback. You got to be smart about getting the ball out of your hands. Reed Egan starting to hold the ball a little too long. So it'll get dangerous back there when you're holding the ball that way. When you got guys like Nada and you got Shipman, you got Perlotti, you got R coming in, Piku. Got to live the fight again. Got to be smart with the ball as a quarterback. Buford comes at you and waves with all of their depth. Handoff, right guard and tackle. Gets it back up to the 38. Gain of about six, but that'll create a fourth down again for St. Pius, and they'll have to punt the ball away. And this is even as dangerous now as anything you're going to get seeing now. David Curry returning punts. He's already broke one today for a touchdown. There's Curry. Just past the halfway point here, the second. Michael Matthews in punt formation. Pressure coming from up high, gets it away. Takes a bit of a pious roll. Goes inside the 25. And here's all that traffic that's being created up front. All that beef is just stopping St. Pius. Yeah, you see Quay Paku right here gets penetration. Look along the board. This is a wave, a wall. That time, Shook Frazier strikes and get off the block. Again, Frazier, a nice job getting off the block. They're getting penetration. They're playing on the other side of the ball. And that's what a traditional 4-3 defense plays. They're, unlike the 3-4, they're not waiting for guys to come block them and catching blocks to protect the linebackers. 
They're on the attack like sharks right now. That's how this 4-3 defense of Buford is attacking like sharks smelling their prey in the water. Clay Paku doing his part on defense. Power set for Buford, 5.36 to go here in the first half. Hand off up the middle. Short yardage at best, maybe a yard. Good job by Andrew Jacon. Excellent work. Joshua Thomas up the middle, maybe a yard. Second down and nine. And you want to keep fighting, because remember, this game can turn around, get a couple turnovers, and St. Pius, I know the kind of spirit they have. You got to think, if they can put up 34 on us, we can turn it around, but got to limit turnovers, and you got to get stops here. You got to get stops and get off the field if you're the St. Pius defense. Dalton Wilson also involved as well. Gain of one, second and nine. Two wide receivers up top. Motion now. Play action. Roll. Wide open in the flat. First time we've had to mention Isaac Nato. There's a flag on the play. Let's see if this comes back. But for the moment, Nata stiff arms down to the 15-yard line. Gain of 59, but we'll see if it sticks. Everybody looks like they're coming back. Illegal shift yep. again on Buford. Jess Simpson is just saying, hey, let's play. There's your rollout. It's the first time we've mentioned Nada in the flat today. Nice cut. Nice blocking downfield. And there's a reason he's one of the most sought after tight ends in the country, ranked the number four prospect. But this is his last game right now as a Buford Wolf. His dad has a job in Jacksonville. So he can head home to Florida. On the offense, replace second down. That's so, interesting. Number one tight end in the country next year, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And he already has, I think the number's 34 offers on the table right now. Pick a school, pick a power five. They want Isaac Nada as part of their offense in two years. 18 wide, a very special talent. Great blocker, plays defense, tied in with big hands. Long throw, Humphrey just in and out of the hands of Aaron Hour. Trying to go for the home run ball there with 414, makes it third and 14. Great protection by Buford's offense. It's an overthrow that time by Luke Humphrey. But I'm going to tell you, great, great protection. Nice pocket set up for the quarterback. we got three seniors, two juniors. The seniors all been starting since 10th grade. Nick Polino, Shane Robinson, and Hunter Holland, big number 77. A Western Kentucky commit. 10th grader has been in the program for a long time as starters. Let's see what happens here on third and 14. Backs either side of Humphrey. Rolls to his right. Overthrow at the marker. Incomplete looking for David Curry. So Buford's going to have to punt. Excellent defense that time by St. Pius. Nice job. Chris Braswell does a good job. The senior gets upfield, gets a nice hit, nice pressure. Forces Luke Humphrey to have to get the ball out of his hands. Eight sacks on a year for Chris Braswell. He's had a phenomenal year this year. 30 tackles, 10 TFLs. Does a good job on that play. David Curry back to punt for Buford. Rugby right gets his foot into it, end over end. St. Pius not getting anywhere close to it. Inside the 35, down to the 31 yard line. 48 with the roll, no return. St. Pius will start it again. And by the way, don't just watch the game. As much as you enjoy Chuck and myself and Sam calling it for you, engage with GPP Sports on social media. Whether you're on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, we want you to be a part of the GPP Sports family. There's so much to see and do. Be sure to find GPP Sports on Facebook and on Instagram and at GPP Sports on the Twitter machine. Tweet us up. That's <laughs> what it's all about. I mean, yep. Mark, Mark Harmon even has Twitter now. No, isn't that something? He's learning, he's learning about it. Reed Egan under a lot of pressure. No surprise there. Gets rid of it incomplete. 
Just way too much pressure right now on Reed Egan. They're only averaging 48 yards passing a game. And this isn't, this isn't the, the defense to start working on your passing game. They're, they're a run-based offense, and he's getting hit every time. But he's standing in there, standing tall in the pocket. Jordan Perlotti got there first before Quay Piku did that time. So I mean, every time we're seeing it now when they're rolling back to pass, you're seeing three and four Buford shirts heading back there. They're just pinning their ears back, tacking up field. Whistle on the play. Timeout St. Pius. Well, St. Pius. And that's their last time out of the first half at the 349 mark. And when it comes to what else is going on at Georgia Public Broadcasting, did you know that GPB offers a free eighth grade Georgia Studies digital textbook? It's available on your iPad and Kindle devices. Download the free GPB app for a free preview and to learn more about the great things GPB is doing around the state or visit gpb.org slash textbook for more information. You know, I think one of the challenges that St. Pius is having is the Buford sending the defensive ends every time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isaac Nada, Tyler Shipman, they're coming every time. I mean, they're like, the philosophy is called play the run on the rush. Okay. So they're getting upfield right now going after the quarterback, and you got the safeties on the pitch for St. Pius. And but what they're doing inside, you got Quay Piku and you got Big Shook Frazier, number 91. They're also playing the run on the rush. They're going through hitting the fullback. They're going to hit Dalton Wilson every time, and they're going through expecting the pass. So the offensive line is going to have to stop the penetration, but right now it's uh, – they're having some challenges with the front four of Buford. Because those four down are trying to find any gap they can find, and they're shooting the gaps and hitting them every time. Every time. Reed Egan on the roll, second down, 10 in the slot, incomplete. Reese was over the top on the defense. Incomplete, and we're going to go to third and 10, and let's take a look at Shug Mountain's day. Well, let's look at big Shug Frazier, number 91. He's right in the middle of the ball, sheds, makes a good tackle here. Great pad level. Gets off the ball, strikes blocks, and that's what you look for here. Low man wins is what my D-line coach Rex Norris used to tell me at the University of Tennessee. Bill Kolar here with the Atlanta Falcons. Low man with hands wins. What did you just see then, Nell? Low man with the hands. He usually wins. Therefore, he won, right? Yep. See, I, 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 I can learn. You're the godfather of football as we know at <laughs> high school football in this town. Come on, I know you know that. <laughs> Third down, 10. Pitch to the corner, 30, 34 yard line. Ransom Klinger again gets a handful of yards, but that's going to create fourth down again for St. Pius. And they're staying in the progression of what they do offensively, and I'm talking about the Golden Lions. Dive, quarterback, keep, and pitch. That, that's the foundation of the triple option. And just got to keep, keep sawing wood, keep sawing wood as. My dad used to always say, keep sawing wood until you break through. That, and that's got to be their philosophy. In assignment football, for those who aren't really used to chasing after it, it's hard because you have to stay with your job the whole time. You know, you, it's, you have to be forced into thinking about what you're doing every single time the ball is snapped. Well, you're exactly right. It takes a lot of discipline to play against a triple option. It's tough to play against. Mm -hmm. It's tough because you got three components of an offense that's, that's been around for Ever since football was probably invented, the triple option, there's always there's different components of it. And right now, Buford has figured it out so far in the first half. St. Pius will have to go back in the locker room, add some more components to it, and try to catch up in the second half. 33 yard punt, no return. Luke Humphrey back under center as we're 256 for the first half. Buford scores 34 points in just under eight minutes at the end of the first half, the first quarter, and the beginning of the second quarter to take this 24-point advantage after Pius had a 10-0 lead and struck fast twice early in the first. Pius got a seven-man wall, seven-man box, as we call it in football, playing man-to-man -man coverage on the four optional receivers there. Motion coming this way. Shepard will hang on to it. 35, 36, maybe the 37 yard line. So Brett Shepard once again coming in to spell Neil Humphrey, getting seven yards off of the zone read. 
and when he's in the game, he's only ran the ball. So that's a tendency that right now that Buford's showing that hopefully St. Pius will pick up, you know, and that's one of the things you want to do. You want to recognize he's the running quarterback right now. Luke Humphreys, the quarterback at number three, is going to throw the rock. Flag at the 30 on Buford, so they're going to move him back and see what the call is here. Holding on the offense. Repeat first down. And that'll move him back. Now Buford had a couple of penalties early in the first quarter when St. Pius got out to that advantage. But Buford for the most part since then in this 34 point run they have been dominant and they've kept the, the yellow flags in the officials pocket. Kospich coming near side cut back 30 35 40 42 yard line first down they picked it all back move the sticks gain of 23 for Xavier Gant. Tall sweep by Xavier Gant injured last week had the hamstring didn't get to see him. I mean he's explosive he, he's the leader of the explosion from Buford. 78 explosive plays mm. this year. Mm. Those are 15 yard runs and 20 yard passes. This offense has been explosive the entire year and they do a lot of it on the ground. You can add another explosive play to his tick marks. <laughs> That's first right. and 10 from the 41 coming up on 220 for the first half. Shepard is a wide out in motion slant route incomplete. Good defense that time by Grant Holloman. Nice job by Grant getting his hands on him. We talked about there in man coverage. That's his responsibility. Here it is on the ground level. Let's hear this hit. There you go. <laughs> nice and physical. Safe tackling. Keep your head up. I like seeing the high school players and the youth players have sound, fundamental, safe tackling. Keep your head up. Have good knee bend so you protect yourself as well as protect the player that you're hitting. Keep your head up. Second down 10 motion again backs in the eye for Buford. We got whistles going on here. More illegal motion. I'm out. Buford timeout Buford then. So it's a timeout for Buford. Another part of Georgia Traveler in the original productions is Georgia Traveler knowing that Chuck Smith is a Georgia traveler on his own. Georgia traveler scours the Peach State just like Chuck Smith does. <laughs> For all the newest, oldest, weirdest, and wildest, David Zelski certainly has gotten into the wet, wild, and weird. We're given that. For all the attractions for you and your family to explore, scenic getaways to high adrenaline adventures, and of course, some of the best eats in Georgia. Just ask Phil Proctor about those. Watch Georgia Traveler Sundays at 7. New episodes coming in January on the great GPB. You know, I'm actually getting ready to try to take me a trip down to Durham town. You yeah. know the Polaris Razors? I have a couple Polaris Razors. My kids have one. We ride off road. Okay. So this place they talk about called Durham town. So I'm going to be a little Georgia traveler here pretty soon. And for the holidays, going to probably head down to Athens. You know, hang out around the city of Atlanta with my kids. Traveling from downtown to Gwinnett. <laughs> well, well, which reminds me, you know, with you being part of the, the Clark Central family, when was the last time you caught up with Coach Henderson? Actually, I was at the college, I mean, the Athens Hall of Fame induction ceremony as they inducted uh, former teammate David Perno this year, former Georgia baseball coach. Saw the old man, Coach Henderson, looking good, doing good. Steve Brooks is with him. Got a chance to see Coach Brooks from over at Grayson. Second down 10 for Buford. From the 41, toss to the corner. Joshua Thomas gets it up close to the 50 as we come up on two minutes in the first half. He's a man job. I think Joshua Thomas is a little underrated. I mean, there, there's so many weapons. They, they usually average running, what, four different runners a game from Buford. Mm -hmm. And he's just, you know, it's a quartet. My guy, Fyrone Davis. Running backs coach, been there six years, has done a fantastic job just managing the expectations of the runners. Four different rushers today, whether it's been Shepard, Gant, Joshua Thomas, or Evan Cooper. Across the 50, and it looks like it might be short of the first down marker by about a half yard. Evan Cooper on that one. 
Oh, Dalton Wilson, number 42, does a good job scraping to the ball. Gonna get call in the it, mix. I'm going to call it fourth and one. And you mentioned the running game, and it is a quartet, and each one of them sings a different song when they get the football. <laughs> so here's what we had on the last play. Great defense this time by St. Pius to stand them up. Nice run. Good effort. Dalton Wilson. Grant Got Holloman it. in there, too. Let's see what happens here. Fourth down, half a yard. Are they going to go power to just try to get the first down off the sneak? Off the edge, first down. Cuts it back in. First handoff to the day to Martin Mangrum. So now it's a quintet. I tell you, showing up a little bit today. Number 41, Jordan Perlotti. He's not showing up in, in scoring, but he's showing up blocking at the point of attack, doing a good job leading the charge from that tight end position. Doing what good fullbacks and tight ends do. Humphrey dropping. Easy out right there to about the 30. Eight yard line for our another quick game there. Eight yards out of bounds with 34 seconds. Gosh, what do you do here when you're if you're St. Pius? I mean, Buford has the ability to run for 37 yards. Easy here. You still got 34 seconds on the clock, but they also can throw the ball, but you can't just completely, you know, assume that they're gonna just throw it because their mentality is we run the ball better than anyone else. Second down and two. Buford has the one timeout left. Working the edges now. Oh, picked off. Looks like it could head the other way. Great defending on the offensive line by Nick Polino. Dalton Wilson with the pick. And that stopped Buford again. There's Dalton Wilson spying the whole time with the great interception there. Polino grabs him and knocks him out of bounds with 27 seconds. Nice eyes by Dalton Wilson reading the quarterback's eyes of Buford, Luke Humphrey. Excellent job. Great eye control. Knowing where your eye should be, that's where your body takes you. So let's see what St. Pius wants to do here. 27 seconds. That's probably four plays in a passing offense. They have no timeout, so they can't work in the middle of the field unless they're going to do stuff in big chunks. Motion, three receivers. Egan looking, slant, in and out of the hands, incomplete. Nice throw. Nice throw that time by Reed Egan, getting the ball out of his hands. And one, two, three, comes out like a rocket. Just want to watch the ball all the way into the tuck. And that's the philosophy as a receiver. You watch the ball all the way until you tuck it up under your underarm. It's something that that young man will keep working on. Incomplete to Michael yep. Bresnahan. So second yep. down in 10, 24 seconds now. You're looking at three plays. Big cushion up top by the Buford defense. Egan dropping again. Pressure from the edges. Steps up into the pocket. Piku had him, lost him. But it looks like Shipman pounced on him for the sack. Not quite to the 40, so there's a bit of a loss there. Let's we'll see if St. Pius just gets back to the huddle because time is running out in the first half. Too many obstacles, too many swarming wolves right now for Reed Egan. There's nowhere to go. Tyler Shipman gets another set. Swarming wolves have been the key in the first half. 34 points scored in an eight-minute span. The end of the first quarter, the beginning of the second. St. Pius had the 10-0 lead, but then that man right there in his defense Took advantage of some opportunities, some short fields, and St. Pius putting the ball on the turf for a 34 to 10 advantage. And let's send it downstairs to Sam Crenshaw with Jess Simpson. Sam. With Coach Jess Simpson, 34 10 at halftime, but it didn't start out that way. No, started a little slow. You know, they got a good football team, but we made some plays, and the, the turnover obviously was huge, but, uh, you know, we just got it. We're, we're making some mistakes. We can clean up. We can, we can do some things better for sure. Talk us about your thing up, up front. You're doing great things up front on both sides of the ball. Seems to be setting the tone for you. We, so far we are. I mean, you know, that's great, but we got 24 more minutes, so we'll see what we can do. All right, thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. That's Coach Jeff Simpson. All right, Sam, thank you very much. Coming up on our GPB Championship Weekend Halftime Show, we'll hear from John Nelson. He visits the Region of Doom, Region 16A. Plus, we'll hear from both marching bands. Plus, we'll hear from Grace Olson, who will be talking to some proud parents, and we'll check in online to see what people are saying about this game. That's all coming up on the GPB Halftime Show. Don't you go anywhere.
Let's get lost tonight. You could be my black cat. Butch Miller from Milton Martin Honda in Gainesville, wishing you and yours a Merry Christmas and the happiest of New Year's. But if you think that the folks at Milton Martin Honda in Gainesville are proud to be supporters of Georgia High School Athletics, you got that right! You look twice before crossing. You exercise, you choose the salad occasionally. But when it comes to staying well, physically, financially, emotionally, going it alone is hard. So Cigna has your back and your knees 24-7 in sickness and in health. Answering your questions, giving you some coaching, helping you get well and stay well. That's having a partner who's with you all the way. Cigna. Each year, more than five million pilgrims travel here to the Catholic Shrine of Lourdes in Southwest France. Tens of thousands of soldiers from around the world. I'm traveling with 40 wounded warriors from the United States. But what are they searching for? You gotta have faith. And that's really what this place teaches you. Join us for Sacred Journeys with Bruce Feiler. Tuesday at 8 on GPB. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. Developing leaders for Georgia agriculture is very important to us at Georgia Farm Bureau. Hi, I'm Ziffy Duval, president of Georgia Farm Bureau. Just like high school athletics, it develops leaders for our community and our state. We at Georgia Farm Bureau think it's just as important to develop the future leaders of Georgia agriculture. Our national security depends on it. Take advantage of Farm Bureau's many services, from multi-line insurance to money-saving discounts. Visit us online at gfb.org. Hey, great party. Oh, thanks. Here you go, one hamburger, medium well. Uh, this is well done. No, 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 that's medium well. What, are you calling me a liar? This thing is practically burnt. That's it. You're not gonna come to my house and tell me how to cook a hamburger. Like, ah, I don't really well. You, you wouldn't do it there. You gotta be crazy. So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship, it's up to you. Welcome back to the GPB Halftime Show here on Championship Weekend. We're at halftime of the 4A game between Buford and the Golden Lions of St. Pius. We have 24 minutes left in this one. And then around 8 o'clock, we will kick off the big 6A matchup between undefeated and top-ranked Colquitt County as they take on the red-hot 11-3 Archer Tigers, the Tigers on an eight-game winning streak. Now, GPB wants to keep you involved online, so let's send it over to a person who has over 10 million likes on our own Facebook page. Thank you, Mark. We've got some of the best games all season long here at the state championships at the Georgia Dome. And we don't want to just only be the ones talking about these games all day long. We also want to hear from you, and that's where social media comes into play. GPV Sports, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. We've told you we're also couch gating. We want to hear how you're couch gating, where you're watching, and how you're watching the games because you guys really, the fans really make this experience. And although you can't really come to the games, you know, you can still be a part of it with social media. So tweet with the hashtag GBB couch gating. Right now we have Whit Mormon who says he's hunting and watching football at the same time. You can see his screen set up here and he's in the woods and everything hunting. That's one of the most interesting ones we found all day. I love that. So hunt gating, I guess you could say. And then Molly Wright says your biggest fan. She's got her little baby watching football. So that baby's being brought up the right way, right? And then Jared says, love that extra point segment makes my day. So Chucky and Nelly, if you guys are listening, he love the extra point, love your keys to the game. And then we have somebody loving the band, the Buford bands watching them on TV. We love the bands getting that airtime that reminds me of the instagram page i wanted to make sure i showed this to you guys too we're also on instagram and here is where we're live updating everything going on during the game um, scores and we also have videos of groups like the bands the cheerleaders and uh, the players and all that is live updated throughout the game so make sure to join us on instagram as well it's a lot of exciting stuff right mark Sounds great, and you've done a great job all day. I like the big screen TV and all the video and all the Facebook. And how many likes do we have? Do you have, do you have an oh, update? Oh, Facebook, hmm, 15,800, 15, I think. All right. 
16,000, I just heard it in my ear, and we've got a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that you can't find on TV, so that's the place to find it with us on Facebook. All right, well, let's like us and get over 17,000 by the end of tonight's activities. Let's take it over with Raven. She's got Dr. Banks Bitterman, the principal of Buford High School, standing alongside dressed in green. Raven? I know, and for once I'm standing next to a principal and I'm not in trouble, thank goodness. What's going on at Buford? Well, you know what, at Buford High School, we believe in AAA excellence. That's excellence in academics, athletics, and the arts. Recently, the writing test scores came out, and I got to give props to my entire faculty and the students. We had the highest writing test scores in the state of Georgia as far as public schools go. 100% um, pass rate, every single kid, 33% exceeds. Um, you know, we talk about AAA excellence, we, this fine band I have, and uh, I've got to give props to, to Mr. Young. and. We've doubled in size over the last couple of years, and they're putting an incredible performance. And, and the good news is we've had two performances today. I'm excited about our football program. Jess Simpson's an incredible man. And, and then you've got Dexter Wood, who, who started the program years ago. We can't go wrong. Well, maybe you'll do the third performance for us and get the question right for, are you smarter than your students? So I'm going to rip this open. Haven't seen the question yet. Throw that on the ground. Let's see. Take most of the time. All right, don't cheat. Can't look at the answer. I was going to let you take the answer. Oh, okay, but that's not how this game works. All right, so often depicted as red, what color are the berries on the mistletoe plant? A, green, B, white, C, blue, D, yellow. You know, we've got a teacher over at the school that's been there for many years, and it's part of why Buford's so special between the community and that. And uh, I'm going to do this for her, but we're going to go B for Bonnie. That is correct. <laughs> thank you. You are smarter than your students. That is awesome. Now, thank you so much for everything you do. Back to you, Mark. You know, with all that red and green, you guys are very Christmassy. Let's now check in with the Buford Marching Band, brought to you by Regions Bank. Great job by the Buford Marching Band, brought to you by Regions Bank. Now, one of our missions at GPB is to raise awareness of the high dropout rate in Georgia high schools. In that end, we started our Stop the Drop program, and over the course of the season, we invited students from all over the state to make a 30-second promo to help stop the drop. Here's our second runner-up, Colby Boudreau of West Forsyth High School. In life, you make choices, and what we choose can affect our lives forever. You have the power to make choices for yourself. When you choose to drop out of high school, you're choosing to drop out of life. Stay in school, stop the drop. Kelly, it was only 30 seconds long, but Kobe, Colby, it was only 30 seconds, but very uh, impressive. What inspired you to make that one? Um, well, I guess going into the project, um, uh, I, I myself, I like to do a lot of special effects, as you saw in the video, and I guess I always have these ideas that I'm trying to come up with, and this specific project, I had the idea to switch the shots like that and make them come back together, and that kind of gave me the idea of the entire video all in of itself. How has that video impacted your life and also maybe the other students at West Forsyth High School? Well, I know for a fact that people have told me that like it's a great video and all, but I guess people also told me that it really got the message to the point to, I guess, people all across the school. You know. Well, Colby Boudreau, thank you very much for coming on with us. We appreciate it and uh, being a part of Stop the Drop. Congratulations. Thank you. thank you. All right. Coming up on our GPB championship show at halftime, we'll hear more from the marching band of St. Pius High School. Also, we'll play another round of Are You Smarter Than Your Students? John Nelson visits Region 16A and has a report from that from the press box, and we'll meet the proud parents of one player. So it's all ahead on the GPB coverage of the GHSA championships right after this timeout.
This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. It's been said that championships aren't won by individuals. They're won with team and teamwork. Hi, I'm Zippy Duval, president of Georgia Farm Bureau. And we're proud of our partnership with Georgia High School Association Athletics. In all of our county farm bureaus across the state, we have a championship team ready to deliver services to you and your family and all of Georgia farmers across this state. We invite you to come to your local county farm bureau and be part of our team. Go team! Visit us online at gfb.org. There's just one place where students are students first, and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This is much my fault as yours. Or are you trying to hide from the truth? What truth? Don't speak her name. You're just like my mother. What is it? Will you kiss me? Traveling at about 50 miles an hour, guessing at about where I should go next. Do you have any ideas? Visit us on our Georgia Traveler Facebook page. Gotta go! Today, companies in the aerospace, advanced manufacturing, and film industries need skilled workers and the earning potential is high. Go Build Georgia can show you where the jobs are and what skills you need to get them. And the Technical College System of Georgia has fast, affordable training for these great paying careers. Build your blueprint for success at GoBuildGeorgia.com and look to the Technical College System of Georgia to put your plan into action. You're looking live at the Georgia Dome, live at our GPB halftime show, live on championship weekend here. We're at the half of the 4A championship game between Buford and St. Pius. And now let's send it down to Raven Torado, who's then got another principal corner, Mr. Steve Spellman of St. Pius. That's right, Mark. We're about to play another edition of Are You Smarter Than Your Students? But before we get started, Mr. Spellman, what's going on in St. Pius? Just, uh, Raven, we're having a great year. We, you know, football kind of sets a nice tone, but the kids have been absolutely amazing uh, cross country won the state in boys, second in girls. Our volleyball team was in the state finals. Our cheerleaders won the region. It's been a great time at St. Pius. It sounds like it. So hopefully you'll keep the tradition going by winning. Are you smarter than your students? Are you going to hear it? We'll see. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Tear this open. Ta -da. I just like the tearing open part. It's the best part. <laughs> All right. Which of the following is not one of Santa's reindeer? A, Vixen. B, Prancer. C, Donner. D, Blitzer. Blitzer. He's smart, guys. You got the Dude. trick question. <laughs> yeah. ah. No in on that. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Mr. Spellman. All right. Over to you, Mark. Blitzer's not a reindeer. He's a wolf. We all know that. Let's check in now with John Nelson up in the broadcast booth. Time for John's Georgia, brought to you by the Georgia EMC. And, John, you're going to tell us about the region of doom. One of the toughest regions in the country, not just in the state of Georgia. And when you're thinking football it is 6a that championship game is coming up and those teams beat each other up every single week of the year when it comes to region play one of them's playing for a title tonight here was our look at region 16a when the season began it's that time pick your cliche but after a bye week Valdosta Lowndes Colquitt Tift and Camden welcome Lee County into one of the toughest tests you'll ever have but what do the guys on the sidelines think about the 2014 version of region 16a is it what we say it is? You know, the, the parity in this region from top to bottom is, is you know, absolutely crazy. It is. We're all about the same. And, uh, you know, so you get a lot of close football games. Uh, you know, there's not those, those weeks on your schedule where you can look down the road and say, if we can just get to that point and get to that game, then we'll be okay. You know, your kids have to be at their best each and every Friday night in this region. 
Lowndes is one of two schools in the last decade to win a state title, three and a four year stretch, but head coach Randy McPherson knows the past is the past. You know, everybody's got good players, everybody's got a good coaching staff, everybody's got great facilities. Um, Nobody's going to dominate this region for any any length of time. You know, I think it's up for grabs this year as, as it will be any year. Camden is the other, and head coach Welton Coffey has learned lessons in the offseason. After a Week 12 bounce last year, he knows how nasty it can get. What everybody's always tough. It does not change. Valdosta returning about seven, eight guys on the defensive side of the ball. Coach Gillespie does a great job. Everybody knows what Cole Quit has. They're going to do an outstanding job. We get caught up in the whole pro show and everything. He's outstanding, man. I really enjoy being around him. And his teams are always prepared on Friday night, and that's what matters. Great quality football over there. And out of the expert to check on the sleepers. Tiff County, uh, they've made a lot of headway the last few years. I think John Reed's done a, an outstanding job. Lee County coming into the region, a lot of good kids, a lot of good South Georgia athletes, but I think there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for them when you have to jump in and coming from playing the region schedule they were playing to now having to play Cockwood, Lounge, Camden, Valdosta. That's, that's a little bit different. And, in, and indeed it is. Lee County, you saw them on Football Fridays making it to the postseason in their first year. Colquitt County nationally ranked in five polls, top five overall. We'll see if they chase a state title and perhaps you know, top three nationally by the time we get to the matinee game tonight, Mark. All right, John. Thank you very much, John. Georgia brought to you by the Georgia EMC, as we all know. <laughs> all right, well, it's time now to check in with the St. Pius Marching Band brought to you by Regions Bank. marching band. Now we're going to send it over to Grace Olson for another edition of Rent Check. Thank you, Raven. This is Rent Check, where we check in with the parents because we know how important these guys are to the football process. Right here, I've got Laura and David Stokes, the parents of Luke Stokes, a Golden Lion. We're going to ask you one quick question each. Dad, who is his favorite NFL player? Julio Jones. John Abraham, no. former Falcon. And Mom, what is his favorite career moment in football? Um, Oh my gosh, help me out here. Peyton Woodward. Peyton Woodward, yes. <laughs> Beating rival Maris. Actually, yeah. Maris. Yeah. <laughs> That's Absolutely. okay. Guys, thank you for joining us. We're going to bring in some t shirts, Football Fridays in Georgia t shirts. We appreciate you joining us on Rent Check. Let's go back to Raven. Now, time for our career play of the game brought to you by the Technical System College of Georgia. Great careers don't always begin with a four year degree and end in a corner office. Welcome to Skilled Trades, where the education is hands-on, the work is rewarding, and the careers are built from the ground up. Job forecasters predict virtually every skilled trade career will grow during the next decade. If you have the right tools, you can shape your future. That's why the entire field of skilled trades is our career play of the game. This message is brought to you by the Technical College System of Georgia. Visit them at tcsg.edu for more information on how you can build your next career. All right, we're getting ready for this 4A championship game. Second half, it's coming up next on GPB. Stay with us. This moment, getting here took three years of sleepless nights and postponed vacations. Your dad said, play it safe. Your husband kept the faith. But franchising is why you partnered with Regions in the first place. We share your vision for moving forward. And at moments like this, I see. that makes all the difference. Is your business at a turning point? Regions. Some questions can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren and I've got your back. I'm not sick. I'm not 
not sick. I'm not sick. She's perfectly healthy. Cigna covers preventive care. That's having your back. What is by moonlight an empty field is by the magic of electricity, sacred ground. As the official energy provider of the GHSA, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives proudly support our student athletes. We are there, illuminating the glory moments fans just have to see. Capturing the hustle, elevating champions, sharing the win. Georgia's EMCs, empowering our youth, lighting the way. Your corporate sponsorship of GPB lets all Georgians know of your support for quality programs that educate, inform, inspire, and entertain. Email us at sponsorship at gpb.org. Thank you. Welcome back. Georgia Dome getting ready for the second 24 minutes, the second half. Buford put the pedal down, Chuck Smith. Down 10 nothing. It's 34-10 at the break as we head to the third quarter. And let's take a look at the first half highlights. And it started with their second quarterback breaking it loose. Well, it comes out. They run a, a basically a quarterback power play, takes it inside for a touchdown. That was, again, made famous by one Tim Tebow from Florida. I made last the night. SEC guy dropping yeah, that. Brett Shepard, 61 yeah, yards, and then it's right. Aaron Auer on the double pass. Well, it does a good job. Aaron Auer does a good job throwing the ball downfield. Excellent catch, excellent throw, nice trickery there. And then a uh, guy whose dad worked in this place in the Fulton County Stadium, David Curry on the punt return. Well, he gets vertical, does an excellent job of splitting the defense, and that's what you want. That is the play that broke the game open. And then there's this one with the ball on the turf. Quay Paku gets the, uh, the benefactor there. Scoop and score! That's what, That's what you defensive do. linemen love. And then the last one, Evan Cooper on the jet. They make it to the corner. I am fast. Third. Yes, I am fast. That is by far <laughs> one of the coolest looking mouth guards I've seen <laughs> and sure enough that's the greatest advertisement that you can have by putting that on the mouth guard. I am fast. Evan Cooper certainly does that. What else do you take from that first half? Well, I take right now that St. Pius on, on offense, they're 0 for 8 on third downs. You can't beat this Buford team being 0 for 8 on third downs. And also, pressure, 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 an eight-letter word that has happened a lot, and there were a lot of white shirts in the backfield right. for Buford the entire half when they put the pedal down. Well, Shook Frazier is causing havoc. Quay Piku, I mean, the entire defense, Shipman. Uh, just go down the list. It's a who's who of pass rushers now that are getting to the quarterback. Coming at you in waves and depth. And there was Shipman there with that particular sack. And as they're getting ready for the third quarter. Take me into the locker rooms a little bit. What are the discussions? Well, the discussions right now in St. Pius's locker room, let's refocus, let's, let's run the ball and do what we do. Let's try to make some plays with our quarterback throwing the ball, passing. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, if you're Buford, you're saying let's put the pedal to the metal, mm -hmm. let's turn it up, let's finish the drill, meaning let's bury it. Considering that Buford has been nationally ranked in polls, this is going to be their test. How hard is it to go to pillar to post? We had it yesterday in the AAA game with Washington County and Calhoun, one versus two. Let's go downstairs. Hold your answer. Let's go downstairs. Sam Crenshaw with Paul Standard. Getting ready to start the second half. Enjoying now by St. Pass coach Paul Standard. Coach Sanders, thoughts about uh, the first half of this game and what can you do to neutralize some of the things that, that Buford likes to do? Well, you know, we we, we got to get some first downs on offense and keep their offense off the field. Got to do a little better job of blocking them up front. And uh, we just got to go back and do what we do. Got a little nervous there, but uh, our boys will fight, and I know they're not going to give up. And let's see what happens in the second half. What do you talk What, what do you talk to them about, about during halftime? There's still a lot of football to be played. Absolutely. I said, that's what I want you all to do. Go back to doing what you've done for 14 weeks. That's how we got here. We didn't get here by just drawing stuff up in the dirt. Just keep doing what we're doing, and we're going to be fine. Good luck to you, second half. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. That's Coach Paul Standard. And there was half of the thought, the thought of the talk that we were going to have. Yep. you got 24 minutes. Just do your thing. And I expect the St. Pius team to come out and compete. That's what you want to do. No matter what the score ends up, or no matter what happens, it's all about competing. 
And whether you win or you lose, if you compete, you can walk out of here with your head, your head high because you know you competed. You gave that. Pooch kick out of the blocks. Buford picks it up. The kickoff brought to you by our friends at Go Build Georgia. Learn a skill, build a career, do it now at GoBuildGeorgia.com. And the reason I can say that, I've, I've been on the other end of both of these. I've been on when I got my butt whooped, and I've been on championship teams. So the bottom line is you got to keep competing. And that's what this is all about for these high school football players. Because in your life, you're going to have tough things happen. So this is just a microcosm of that, what happens in society. You still got to compete when things don't go your way. So I want to see St. Pius keep competing. So this is a, one of those life lessons that everyone can learn, whether winning or losing. Humphrey way overthrows Isaac Nada on the first down play. And I'm not one of those parents that adheres to the philosophy of, well, it doesn't matter if you win or you lose as long as you, you know, you're out there. It does matter if you win or you lose as long as you compete and give effort. I'm mm -hmm. cool with that. If I lose and give effort, you can walk out of a stadium without crying. The guys that are crying are the ones that don't compete, that turn it down. Second down, 10 for Buford, coming out with a pass play for their first down play here, first play of the third quarter. Buford in their 13th championship game in the last 15 years. And when we were in the pregame show, the philosophies offensively for both of these teams one of them was ground, one of them was pound, and we're seeing it right here. Well, you're exactly right. And number one was ground with Buford. Nick Polino, the offensive tackle, said, we are mad if we don't go for 250 yards rushing. And they're coming up upon that now. And pound is some early success for St. Pius. Just got to get back to it. They were halfway there, had 127 yards in the first half. Shepard. On the zone read, takes it up to midfield for the first down. Move the sticks, gain a nine. Shepard's doing a good job. He's running a quarterback power when he gets in here every time. I think he's running, what, three times, three, four times? He's mm -hmm. running that same play. Right. It's a good tendency. Hopefully, St. Pius picks that up. When you see Shepard in, you go right for the quarterback until he shows you something otherwise. Shepard, a junior, 6'4", 197. You look on the depth chart, and he's not number one, and he's not number two at the quarterback position. Call him Playmaker. <laughs> we'll add that to the depth chart. Playmaker, Brett Shepard. Toss, 50, 45, down to the 43. Joshua Thomas again, and this is what we expect from Buford in the third and fourth quarter. Those threes and fours, because of their depth, because of their size, turn into sixes and sevens. And give a lot of credit to the running back coach, Coach Davis, six years at Buford, done an excellent job. I think the, the toughest part of when you're managing guys that carry the ball is their expectations. Everybody wants to run the ball. But the one thing that Buford's been able to do throughout the years is have lots of runners and everybody do it for the team. One goal, team. Walton Wilson on the tackle, toss, gets it close to a first down one more time by Joshua Thomas. Depending on the spot, could be third and short. Let's see what happened here. Great pursuit down the line of scrimmage by St. Pius in that particular instance. And Andrew Jacone with the tackle. We're two minutes in. Jacone's made some good plays tonight. Does a good job coming down the line of scrimmage. And they're going to call it. First down, move the sticks, ball at the 41. Perlotti guarding, throwback, screen, complete. Down to about the 34 yard line. And completion that time to David Curry. David Curry active on a bunch of different aspects of the ball. Yeah, number 22 showing up. Seven for 105 on a year, 15 yard average. There's the pressure off the edge. Getting rid of it in time was Luke Humphrey. Well, I like the pressure coming. That was a nice call by defensive coordinator Jerry Stewart. Got to pick your poison. We're going to stop the run. And we're going to send somebody at that quarterback every time. Chris, try to slow him down. Chris Braswell in on the pressure there. Second down and three. Jet sweep, fake. Shepard up the middle inside the 30. Let's see if they give him the 28. Gain of six. 
So that gives Shepard 77 yards on the ground in four carries. It's a tough play to stop. Fake the jet sweep, come with a quarterback power. I talk about it all the time. But the, I never saw that play ran until I saw Tim Tebow running at Florida. There might have been some guys at Oregon over the years out west running, but at Florida, he was the first guy I ever seen at the big back, and that's Brett Shepard's kind of running the same way. Thought about it, play action, Humphrey roll out. Nice knock away that time on defense by Brennan Fitzpatrick for the incompletion, second down. Look who the receiver is, Shepherd. Brett Shepard. Where, I told you there's a new category that we're setting up here. We're calling Playmaker. Playmaker. I like it. Athlete. <laughs> but that's what the colleges are calling them now. You got, yep, they got the athlete category for players that can do all kinds of different things, have different talents. Fitzpatrick, six foot, 190 pounds, going up against 6'4", 197. This is the ninth play of the drive. Second down and 10 from the 28. Handoff, cuts it back inside. Still grinding is Thomas, and Thomas gets it down to about the 21, so give him six, maybe seven. Your ISO of number one just gets the handoff, hops over the blocker, finds it at left guard and tackle, gets it just outside the 20. Nice run. Nice tackle that time. Good effort for Whitlark getting to the ball. This is an experienced linebacker group. Five seniors, one junior in the unit. They're still playing hard. Nice tackle that time by Whitlark. Power set right. Perlotti offset is the fullback. Thinking about Evan Cooper. Perlotti clearing the way. Does Cooper get to the corner? Yes, but he's tripped up at about the 15-yard line. And great work by Nick Spear and the rest of the secondary for St. Pius to keep that from turning into another six. If I were to ask you what a nub is, what would you tell me, Nelly? What's a nub? Just like the little section yep. of part of what's left over. And that's what you're seeing right now from the St. Pius defense. They're being set up. They're Buford's putting the strength of the receivers to the left and the nub is to the right, so it makes it a short corner. And that's what you see with Evan Cooper. He's hitting the short corner. He's, he's running around the nub. And everyone blocking down to make the seal. Joshua Thomas, touchdown. 15 yards. And that play was reminiscent of the game-winning score that Thomas had two years ago, running right edge to give him the 10-3 win. So this year as a senior, he goes around right edge, puts six more points on the board, 725 to go for the third. Buford could take the lead to 31. That run was all downhill. Great blocking. Nice job by Joshua Thomas running the daylight. Bonadies point after up and in. 41 to 10 Buford. 41 unanswered points for Buford. Here's your technical college system of Georgia touchdown replay. TCSG, learn more, earn more. We talked about explosive plays this year during the regular season. Buford, 78 explosive plays. Hmm. It's amazing. And with that explosive play, it is 41 to 10. Buford well on their way to another championship. We'll come back for the third quarter to complete the Dome when we come back on the great GPB. You look twice before crossing. You exercise, you choose the salad occasionally. But when it comes to staying well, physically, financially, emotionally, going it alone is hard. So Cigna has your back and your knees 24-7 in sickness and in health. Answering your questions, giving you some coaching, helping you get well and stay well. That's having a partner who's with you all the way. Cigna. Welcome back, Georgia Dome 725 for the third. Buford well in control. 41-10 now over St. Pius as they march toward yet another championship. This time in the quad A class, Thomas so far averaging six yards a carry. Nine carries for 54 yards. Just got the last score on the board for Buford. And that offense has taken a blow because they certainly deserved it tonight with all the road graders up front and the athletes behind. Well, you make a good point. This offensive line has been fantastic the entire season. Number 58, Nick Polino, North Carolina commit. 
53, Shane Robinson in his cloud. Cooper Simpson, you know, he played as a true freshman, a junior, got a bright future, and Hunter Holland, a Western Kentucky commit. You know, one of the things that Coach Simpson talked about is the communication and the pad level of his offensive linemen. He described, you know, how they work together, stick together, hang out together, and it's, you know, pretty amazing. But they're leading the charge, six TDs, six different players for Buford today, which is uh, which is a winner. For them, it's par for the course. Paul Standard during the week was talking about the Buford running game, and he said, looking at that offensive line, it looks like what Alabama did when they were <laughs> playing here the week before when they were playing Missouri in the SEC championship game. He said they were large, they were strong, had great feet, and kept coming at you in waves, and they've certainly done that. Matt Bonnady's foot into the football touchback. That's a great compliment. Because, you know, the offensive linemen are so unsung when it comes to football, but they're the most important aspect, I believe, of a team. Not defensive linemen? Well, no, because I believe the offensive linemen are the most important because they protect the quarterback. The quarterback's the franchise of any offense. But the defensive linemen chase after the quarterback. Well, you know, it, it, we're, we're, we're number two. <laughs> 1A? We're number two. Yeah, we'll say 1A, <laughs> but I'll say we're number two. You know, it, it just depends. But I think, you know, offensive linemen, if you can't run the ball, well, because, your, because your offense, if you can't run the ball, your offensive line's not blocked. And in the playoffs, when the, the playbook's compressed, yep. if you can run the football and play defense, usually good things will happen. St. Pius right up the gut, get you two. Once again, trying to get Dalton Wilson sprung. It sprung him early, but they pretty much have clamped him down since that first big run in the first quarter. And think of this, the great season that St. Pius has had, and they've had a great season. It's because they run the ball. Mm -hmm. This is a team that runs the ball, 55 touchdowns rushing in 2014. They've had a phenomenal season. They've just ran into a roadblock today in the Buford defense. St. Pius gain of two. Second down and eight, 645 and counting third quarter. Dive play. 42 works his way up to about the 28 yard line. So another big gain that time for Dalton Wilson right on his year average of 5.8 coming into the game. Got six there. So it's going to be third down and two. We just talked about Dalton Wilson a lot in that first quarter after a long run. Mm -hmm. Tony, one of the most phenomenal stats I've ever heard for two fullbacks. 178 carries, only one negative carry for lost yardage this year. That is phenomenal. That is Running the ball, six foot, 225 pounds, 15 touchdowns. Dalton Wilson, he's a player. Six he's carries, player. 78 yards so far on the day for Wilson. Triple option set. Egan pitches, corner, Joey Connors. I think he was out just shy of the 30. Let's see what happens. They're going to give him right to the 30 yard line. So first down, move the sticks for St. Pius. I'm interested to see where number 17, Connor Houston, goes. I'll tell you this now. Number 17, Connor Houston and TD Roof, mm -hmm. they jump off the TV screen. I'm telling you, if you're watching, and right now they're jumping off the field right here as I'm watching them right now. They're <laughs> playmakers. I mean, uh. I was about to say that Connor Houston's been working his way right to left a lot today, <laughs> making sure that St. Pius doesn't get a lot of yards. Dive is faked, pitch 30, 35, got the corner, first down past the 40-yard line. Big gains that time for Ransom Klinger. Klinger, the third leading rusher for St. Pius on the year, and he's been on a season average. He averages over 10 yards a carry, but he had to pull his helmet off after the run. He's sitting down on the sidelines, and the St. Pius medical staff's going over to take a peek. He's looking, he's looking, there's the corner. Big hit right there as he was heading out of bounds. Took a tremendous shot that time. Brandon Mangrum was there to meet him, and here it is. Klinger on his feet. One more look from the side. Houston pushes him, Mangrum meets him. Does a good job of using the shoulder, though. I'm glad he's okay. That's a good sign. And you don't want to see him use his head. That's one of the things that you look for. Nice safe tackle there by Brandon Mangrum. 
four pass broken up this year, 2014. Because think of what, he, what you just saw as he got his body in position. Actually, great body control that time by Brandon Mangrum, so he doesn't have to use his head. A nice run. Good job that time by St. Pius getting the edge. Nice blocking that time by Chad Nelson over at left tackle. And looking at Klinger's shoulder from that impact that he took from the hit by Mangrum. So we'll see if he comes back into the ball game as we get to five and a half and counting third quarter. Dive is faked. Egan hangs on to it. Back to the line of scrimmage, maybe. Nada there. Baku there. At Connor Houston these last two weeks versus Cartersville, number 17. I don't know where he's got to cut 12 offers, but he's a player. He's again, he is jumping off the field at me. I just he's every time wherever that ball is at, he's on it. Klinger's back in. And there's Connor Houston. You know, I'd like to say that Connor Houston's had a busy day, but you could say that pretty much about anybody in that front eight defensively for Buford. I know I had to get off of Suge and those guys for a minute. Him and PQ, they've made so many plays. We talked about them. T.D. Roof is stepping up. Joshua Thomas, big-time player, also going to Tennessee. Joey Connors has to take the snap at quarterback this time because Egan lost his helmet on the previous play. There's a flag, a lot of flags going on right there. So we'll see what the end result is. Stephen Reese reacting. David Curry had a hip toss out there on somebody. Thought it was the old, I thought I was going to see Gordon Soley, the old WCW, <laughs> making a, a ring announcement. And Dusty Rhodes was going to come out with Ric Flair. That was a wrestling tactic then. A little hip toss? <laughs> a little hip toss. Personal foul call on Buford. So they're going to move at 15. Jess Simpson wants an explanation. He's not happy with the one that he's getting. And here's a look. Let's see what happens. There's Steven Reese grabbing. After play, personal foul. It's like a leg defense. scissors by Steven Here's Reese. The offense, first down. No, that, that wasn't the penalty. The penalty was downfield. Okay. It, it, it was on, again, it was on Curry 22. It was a hip toss mm -hmm. downfield late. Now, I know Buddy used to get nasty in the trenches in the old yeah. days. <laughs> you can get your opponent in a pinning combination. All you need to do is have him down for a three count. Egan rolling over the far sideline, and it looked like Stephen Reese was battling for it with Joey Connors. And what are they going to do? They're going to call. Great catch. Possession with the receiver, and St. Pius will hang with it, but Connors comes up limping. Let me spend a few moments on this young man, Joey Connor. Mm -hmm. He goes into the season as a starting quarterback. He gets switched to running back. He can play all the positions. And Connor stole it from Stephen Reese when they went up in the Still air. Still fighting. After the second game. Reese had it. Yep. Connors came down with it inbounds. Right? Yep. There. And ooh, the hands just cup underneath. Nice work. Excellent effort. Love the kid's attitude. Gain of 25. First and 10 for Pius. Egan hanging on to it. Gets inside the 10 down to about the 8. Gain of 4. Had a 30-yard touchdown run with TD with 40 seconds left to beat Woodward. They wouldn't be here, so give him a lot of credit. In this day of selfishness in sports, Joey Connor, number 11, is one of the good guys. Grabbed him by the back of the jersey. And that slowed his momentum. There's Isaac Nada. All 6'4 of him. He's probably going to be about 260. And I think a lot of folks are already comparing him to the Rob Gronkowski, Jimmy Graham types that tied in, and he's not even to college yet. Yep, because he needs to be 275 then. <laughs> big old tackle. Patience, tackle. Dr. Ruff. Patience. <laughs> Egan looking. End zone floats it too far. Go, go, go. I like that play call, though. Play action pass at that point. Intended for Cameron Fannin, who's a little shaken up. He was drifting back. Reed Egan was drifting back, throwing off his back foot. And that's, the ball drifted a little bit. Here's a look at it. Coming at you, looking down on it. Egan, having to scramble again, floats it. Just floats it too far. Yeah. Drifts a little bit. 
Still trying to make a play. Third down six from the eight. Me being the uh, PhD in math that I am, that means they can get a first and goal at the two. That is true. Florida State, huh? Yeah, Florida State. Yeah. You saw Cameron Fannin well, being taken off. He landed on his shoulder pretty hard in the back of the end zone when he was trying to see if he could get the Egan pass for the score, and they're going to look at him. So they're looking at me. They're looking below the they're looking below the waist. Let's see what happens there on Cameron Fannin. So 3.30 and counting for the third. Third down six. I'm looking to a, to a throw here. I'm St. Pius. Three wide. I'm trying to throw it two times. We got whistle, so they won't even get the playoff, whatever it is they were thinking. Timeout, St. Pius. Pius is going to call a timeout. So they're going to think about it here, third and six. And we also talk about all the other programs that Georgia Public Broadcasting has. We've talked about Georgia Outdoors and Georgia Traveler, one of the most popular series in public broadcasting history. Downton Abbey, there's Stop the Drop. When you look at Stop the Drop, we're going to have the winner of the Stop the Drop contest coming up in the tailgate party. $2,500 scholarship. The Stop the Drop initiative is huge, dedicated to preventing high school dropouts here in the state of Georgia. Asking students around the state of Georgia to take part, create a 30-second PSA. We find out who the winner is in the 2014 contest for Stop the Drop coming up in the tailgate party after this game. Yeah, I need to get, hang out with the Georgia Travelers a little bit. No, but, but, you just, but, but the thing is, you just said that you're more Georgia outdoorsy types by taking those ATVs off into the woods. I'm an adventurer. Okay. I like it. So that sounds more like outdoors than travel. Yeah, I, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm but ready. You, you, and Phil Pro, you and Phil Proctor doing the food finds and having eating <laughs> contests, that I'm looking forward to. I'm a South diet, Carolina though. offensive tackle and a defensive <laughs> tackle from the Tennessee Volunteers. That's what I want to see. <laughs> Third and six, St. Pius down 31. Let's see if they can knock it into the end zone or get a first down. Egan dropping. He is flushed. Near side, winds and fires. It is incomplete. So that will be fourth and six from the eight. And does Paul Standard get points here or try to go for it on fourth down? Looks like he's sending out Michael Matthews for the field goal. Yeah, everybody's covered here. It's a four-man rush, but they're going to bring a blitzer, a pressure, a mole blitzer. You don't know who he's going to be. It's Connor Houston. He's just nowhere for the quarterback to step up, no space. He's having to throw out of a well. That's what it looks like to the quarterback with everybody surrounding him. 26-yard field goal attempt by Michael Matthews. Spot kick. And they, got, and they missed it. They say that he missed the field goal attempt, so the margin stays 41 to 10. Snap was a little off. Looks like the holder bobbled it a little bit. Looks like the timing was off a little bit for the kicker. Yep. And, okay, they say that it was wide left and missed it. So it'll stay 41 to 10 with 3.05 to go in the third. And always teaching, always learning. You've got Reed Egan at quarterback, Paul Standard, always game planning, always trying to see what happened out there. It's a learning experience, win or lose. Buford comes out throwing again, complete to about the 24-yard line, so a quick game. That time by Evan Cooper. Be a quick gain of four. Clock continues to run. Under three minutes to go, third quarter. Buford marching to yet another championship. 41-10 over St. Pius here in the Quad A classification. Last year, Buford won. They were down early to Washington County, came back to win with power football. So they're trying it again this year in Quad A. Hand off up the middle. Martin Mangrum with the carry there. Gets it just shy of the 30. Here's your power football again. Ground slash pound. That's what they want to do. I mean, that's who they are. When you think of Buford football, you think of their DNA. It's ground and pound. We're going to run the ball. And we're going to have lots of guys that can run the ball. 
Five different tailbacks, three different halfbacks. You saw Jordan Perlotti, 41 in white, clearing the way, getting to the linebacker level. Toss this time around to the corner. First down and trying to break it loose is Joshua Thomas. He gets the first down, and they're going to mark him out after the first down gain. So they'll move the sticks one more time, move it to the 38-yard line, and an injured Pius player down on the field is Andrew Jacone. Take a look at it here. 148 to go, third quarter. Buford's averaged 7.3 yards per carry mm. this year on a run, averaging 256 yards a game. Total offense is 347, so that's who they are. They, they like to run the ball. They've uh, had a lot of success with this philosophy, and Jess Simpson, 10th season, is clearly has a stranglehold on anything to do with running the ball in the state. You want to talk about 10 years, Jess Simpson being head coach. You're going to notice a lot of familiarity in that second column right there in the middle. Beat Washington County last year. Beat St. Pius two years ago. Lost in overtime to Calhoun in 2011. That was Calhoun's first title since 1952. Champs in 2010 in overtime. Calhoun again, meeting them four years in a row, beating them three out of the four. And then whitewashing love it back in 2007, 50 to nothing here in the Dome. So in the last decade and a half, they've won in double A. They've won in triple A. And now they're in quad A. And the way they're winning today, pretty soon they need to think about getting up to five A. Well, they're playing six A competition. They played McEachern this year. Yeah, that's true. They beat them too. So, hey, I, I think they can play with anyone, particularly when you, when you can run the ball. And then the, the thing is, They've pretty much averaged nine Division I prospects over the last nine, ten years. I mean, each year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, give them a lot of credit for developing the talent, for building up the program. You know, they won their first state in 1978. Mm -hmm. But when you think about Buford, they, they believe in the program and these young men, and they put resources into it. So give them a lot of credit. Chasing after their 11th championship today. Gain of two makes it second down and eight. Coming up on one minute to go, third quarter. Play action. Pressure. Looping it down the seam. Wide open. Aaron Auer again. 40, 60 yards for the score. Buford on the board one more time. Making it look easy. Yeah, that, that was pretty easy. But the quarterback does a good job here. Luke Humphrey keeping his eyes downfield and splitting the, the pass rush. You had two, two single high safeties covering one third. He splits the middle. Looks like a post. I'm not exactly sure, but nonetheless, splits it right down the middle. 60 yard pass completion. Another big play for a score for Buford on the day. Monadies in for the point after. And it's 48 to 10. You know, St. Pius was looking as Humphrey was rolling out. They all went with the pressure, and they all went with Humphrey to the far side. There's your scoring drive brought to us by our friends of the Technical College System of Georgia. TCSG, learn more, earn more, 80 and 5. Took up 2 minutes and 8 seconds. 60 of those yards coming up right here. And anytime you play a zone, what happens is David Curry, he keep, I'm sorry, Aaron Auer keeps on getting vertical. You got two safeties in zone. Know what they saw? They saw the quarterback, Luke Humphrey, break the pocket. And they there he goes. Yep. There's the break. Everyone's yep. drifting to the right. And so Humphrey and just so finds Auer, who just kept drifting and following his quarterback. Yep. And, that, and that's what happens. Anytime you're in that situation in the zone, the philosophy has to be nothing over your head. They had two safeties over top for the deep pass. But again, we talked earlier about what is eye control. Mm -hmm. Un your eyes should have been where that receiver was at, number 12, Aaron Howard. Four catches, 126 yards. It's not a bad average. 31 and a half. Two big touchdowns for Hour on the day. My math is right, it's 31 and a half. But four for 126, a great day for Aaron Hour. You're a math major. It's a poli-sci major, what are you talking about? I thought you said math major. No, I said, I said if my PhD in math worked. Are you big braining me up here? Did you say, I thought you said you were F, did I, did I mix that up? Oh, I said that if my PhD in math worked and I did the math oh. right. 
I was a poli sci major. I was trying to work my math up. <laughs> Six from eight is two. <laughs> now, I want to ask you, hashtag Dr. Rush, if you have the GPB Sports Football app on your iPhone. And if you don't, you don't know what you're missing. You can watch tonight's game live on the app. If you have to leave, we got the end of this game. We've got the 6A championship with Archer and Coquit County coming up after that. Get all the latest scores, news from around the state, blogs, and so much more. It's free at the App Store. Download it today. If you haven't downloaded it on your iPhone, download it on your iPhone. I got it. First and 10, St. Pius. Trying to work their way down the field. Pass caught at the 25, just short of the 30-yard line. I actually have a lot of apps, and sometimes it affects my memory on, on my phone. You and my me both. My son calls me an appaholic. <laughs> <laughs> you got too many apps, Dad. This is how you take this off the phone. Slowing down your memory. <laughs> Pass complete there to Brennan Garrison for the gain of eight, maybe nine. So they'll call it second down and one. Good first down work that time. Under 30 seconds to go third quarter. St. Pius is going to continue to run their offense. Do what they need to do. There's the handoff. Trying to get to the first down. I don't quite think they got to the 30. Second effort might have cleared it over with Dalton Wilson. Quick off the ball, Shug Frazier. Man, gets penetration, playing in the backfield. And that'll pretty much do it for the third quarter. They're going to call it a half-yard gain. So it'll be third down and one for St. Pius when we come back. Buford chasing after championship number 11 has been dominant after being down 10-0 in the first. They've scored 48 in a row. And the running game has done it for them. 12 minutes to decide the Quad A championship when we come back to the Dome on the great GPB. Butch Miller from Milton Martin Honda in Gainesville, wishing you and yours a Merry Christmas and the happiest of New Year's. But if you think that the folks at Milton Martin Honda in Gainesville are proud to be supporters of Georgia high school athletics, you got that right! This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. You can't think about service in Georgia without thinking about our brave men and women in uniform. I'm here today with the Georgia National Guard, and we're very proud of them and their families and how they represent our state. At Georgia Farm Bureau, we're proud about the service we deliver to you and your family and to Georgia agriculture. We invite you to come to your local Farm Bureau office and join our family. Ooh. Take advantage of Farm Bureau's many services, from multi-line insurance to money-saving discounts. Visit us online at gfb.org. This isn't Madison Square Garden. These drills probably won't make anyone a number one draft pick. But these players are practicing for something important. While they work on their jump shots, they're also learning teamwork, discipline, self-confidence, how to deal with wins and losses. Skills that will make them winners long after they leave the court. Support high school activities in your community. Because when kids take part, they get set for life. Buford on a roll here at the Georgia Dome, up 48 to 10 over St. Pius, heading into the fourth quarter of the state title game. Now we asked you earlier in the game which classification the Wolves were in for six out of their 10 state titles. The answer is double A. They were in single. They moved from single to double A in 2002 and then from 2A to triple A in 2012. So they've been all over the board and our trivia winner is Ryan Grady. He answered the call very quickly on Twitter and so did a lot of you but Ryan Grady is the winner who will get two tickets to the College Football Hall of Fame. Back up to you guys. Thank you very much Grace. Start of the fourth quarter. 12 more minutes before Buford gets title number 11 up 48 to 10 here at the Georgia Dome. Stats after three quarters. And it's the dominant. You had 
250 yards was what Nick Polino was looking for for rushing yards. They've got 200, but it's very balanced offensively. 374 to 168 right now. Yards on the ground. Third down, about half a yard. First play here for St. Pius here in the fourth quarter. And it doesn't look like Dalton Wilson got there, even with momentum. No, he didn't get there. Penetration looks like it stopped him again. Well, it looks like he did get there. Looks like they gave it to him. Mac LeGrant in on the tackle. First time we've mentioned the junior's name today. They cleared the 30-yard line, so it'll be first down. Pius will get the reset. And St. Pius coming into the fourth quarter. 30 rushes, only 93 yards. And they average twice that, and they're only averaging three yards a carry. 93 yards of total offense on the ground. Deflected and... They're going to call it incomplete. Let's see what happened here. Ball was tipped. Yep, right there. One hopper. And there's your tip. And look who. Paku. Yep, Paku gets his hands up. He's had a strong day today. It's really been tough, though, for St. Pius on offense. They've really struggled on third downs. Just one of ten on third downs. And they were, what, 0 for 8 in the first, first half? Yeah. Can't keep the ball if you can't convert on those third downs. Let's see what happens here. Egan winding up. Big pressure again. Picked off at the 40. And stepping in front of the pass for the big, easy pick. He's number 10, and he's not on our roster. Got a nine, I have an 11. Let's see what happened here. Well, it starts with Jordan Perlotti, number 41. Again. Well, it starts right here. Jordan Perlotti gets upfield, does a good job with a slap swim move, gets pressure on the quarterback. He has to get the ball out of his hands. There's your roll, Perlotti with the pressure off the edge and the pick. Bringing it back the other way, and Buford's going to run the football. Once you want again, to Joshua Thomas on the carry. Perlotti affects the quarterback. That's what you want. Gets a turnover. Now you want to ground and pound. Demario Latt was given credit for the interception. He's the one who's wearing number 10. So now here's the depth and the waves and all the different numbers and all the different folks that Buford can throw at you here in the fourth quarter. When it's a close game, they can come at you in waves and put you away. And when it's a game like this, you can do the same thing. Just keep coming at you with different folks. Handoff. Cut to the near side. Great pursuit. And a belly-to-back suplex almost for the tackle there. But great pursuit by Brennan Fitzpatrick to keep it from being any kind of a game past the line of scrimmage. Good loss of a couple there. And here's Fitzpatrick on the pursuit. Does a good job. Good job wrapping them up. Secures them. Good solo tackle. Christian Turner getting some carries. And there's your ATH, Brett Shepard now in at quarterback. Still in the quarterback. Pass is complete. Brandon Mangrum. Mangrum with the catch. Good job by Mangrum getting his feet, breaking his feet down. 10 yard curl route. Nice throw and catch here. Good job catching the ball with his hands. Julian Holloman with the tackle that time. Luke Humphrey, senior, waited his turn. Six foot, 150 pounds. If you tried to pick him up as someone just walking, you wouldn't necessarily think he's the quarterback. And on a fourth and two, the power situation gets him the first down. And it looks like it was Anthony Grant getting reps now with the toss. Anthony Grant, a ninth grader at 5'11", 180 pounds. Good job by Grant here. Coming downhill, good blocking. Keeps those feet, feet churning. Tyler, Tyler Shipman getting some reps at fullback now. Yep. 
was nicked up a little bit. Tyler Shipman this year didn't get a chance to play as much fullback as he normally does. He's done an excellent job at defensive end. Now here's Brett Shepard in getting snaps. Motion up high. Take the jet up the middle. Shepard spin move almost got out of the tackle down to about the 14 gain of 13. They had a lot of success with this quarterback power play the entire game. They faked the sweep takes it. He's reading right off the center's butt. The philosophy is I'm going to bang it behind the center. I'll bend it behind the tackle anytime you want to run a quarterback power. So it all starts up front. Cooper Simpson Shane Robinson in his cloud. Number 77 Big Hunter Holland all doing a superb job today of moving the defensive line back. Brett Shepard getting 18 yards a clip. Five carries, 91 yards for him. Humphrey back in for the toss. We're going to swing it wide. Left guard and tackle had the hole that tripped up. At the last, it was Christian Turner. Couldn't quite break it for the score. He's down inside the five. It's good blocking here across the board. Nada moving people out of the way. Good running. Really interesting when you think about Luke Humphrey. He's been a quarterback since six, since seven years old. Mm -hmm. Been in the program, he's done an excellent job. And think about last year, you're playing behind Taylor Mitchell, Montgomery Van Gorder, right. when the Wolves win, win the 3A championship. And just thinking about the opportunity that you'll have the next year and try to turn it around and give him a lot of credit for stepping up this year. People have said he's too small, he's not big enough. All the different things the scouts have said, but. He's playing big tonight. Flag on the Anthony Grant carry. Let's see what the call is here. It's Illegal formation on the offense. Replay the down. So they'll back it up. Jess Simpson bringing in the signaling in the play from the sidelines down to five and a half to go regulation. What else can you say about St. Pius this year? The Golden Lions, 6 4 a champs, mm -hmm. do an excellent job in seventh region championship overall, building a great program, great kids, doing it the right way, getting after it. You know, give a lot of credit to Coach Standard, his team. Think about how the comeback they made against Woodward to get here showed a lot of perseverance. They're still competing right now, which, Connor, is, a, which is a great sign. Connor Talton with the carry, bounces it back to the left, gets a couple. And there are a lot of friends on these two rosters with the coaching staffs. They've all known each other for a long time. Paul Standard lives in Buford. You've got Dickie May, who's been a longtime friend of Paul Standard and the program here. You know, Jerry Stewart, all of these guys. They've been Gwinnett County guys. And Coach Standard, obviously an alum of St. Pius. And you have all these friends who are out here on the field playing football right. and coaching football and coaching young men. And... You know, it's they they understand that it's just football and you have friendships that cross over the line of scrimmage and it's plain to see here with Buford and Pius that there's a lot of respect for both squads and a lot of deep friendships that go both ways. I remember going out and seeing Jerry Stewart over at Parkview when he was winning championships. So like you said, they're all intertwined. Mm -hmm. Lots of the St. Pius players live in Gwinnett. And um, I think it's part of a competitive nature though to get out here and compete but I, I like the way the spirit of St. Pius mm -hmm. and Buford right. is competing to the end and that's what you're supposed to do just keep competing. You know Neil Auer worked at Parkview he was the offensive coordinator when Jerry was the defensive coordinator there. So it goes through a lot of different families and a lot of respect on both sides power set fourth and two first down carry there for Connor Tarleton off the left tackle. So it'll be first and goal at 3.30. Running downhill, Connor Tarleton. Good for that senior to get some carries. 5'8", 180 pounder. And would you believe it if I told you, Kevin Barnes is responsible for this statistic. It's the first, first and goal Buford has had tonight. <laughs> And why is that? Because of Big the what? plays. Explosive. The explosive plays. plays. That is correct. Yep. Humphrey, handoff. They call him just down, just shy. Tarleton again. 
2.45 and counting. Power football. Yep. Great work, though, by the St. Pius defense to keep it from being a touchdown on that particular play. Great undercut there to make it second down and goal. Just keep fighting. That's all you can do. Chris Braswell, part of that yep. work, 85. Been in the backfield. Coming clean a couple times. Handoff, touchdown, Buford. Tarleton again gets the score. And you see the celebration for the offensive line as they clear the path for the senior. Special moment for that young man and all the seniors out there. Anytime you win a championship your senior year, it's always special. Buford now puts points 54 and looking to point, put point 55 on the board with the Bonadies point after with 2.12 to go. Bonadies point after is good. 55 to 10. And with the Connor Tarleton score, Buford has cleared half. A century, 55-10, 55 unanswered against St. Pius here in the Quad A title game at the Dome. I've got my head checked by a jumbo check. GHSA Championship is made possible in part by Regions Bank. It's time to expect more. Georgia's Electric Membership Corporation, lighting the way. Technical College System of Georgia, learn more, earn more, Cigna, together all the way. And viewers like you, thank you. The GHSA would like to thank the Georgia Farm Bureau. As a strong, stable bank, Regions is always looking for opportunities to boost the vitality of our communities. In addition to offering financial solutions for our customers, we are committed to supporting local initiatives and organizations that help our neighborhoods thrive. Regions is proud to be a partner with GPB in building a better Georgia. Some questions can't wait until morning. So I'm one of many nurses at Cigna with answers anytime, day or night. I'm Lauren. And I've got your back. I'm not sick. I'm not sick. I'm not sick. She's perfectly healthy. Cigna covers preventive care. That's having your back. Providing safe, affordable, and reliable electricity requires more than bucket trucks and utility poles. These are the faces behind your power. For more than 75 years, Georgia's nonprofit, member owned electric cooperatives have been on a mission to brighten the lives of more than four and a half million Georgians. We are Georgia's EMCs, proudly serving our members, lighting the way. Nothing prepares you better for a great career than the Technical College System of Georgia. TCSG colleges produce graduates with the knowledge and training today's top employers are looking for. With campuses across Georgia, state-of-the-art facilities, and outstanding instructors with real-world experience, it's the kind of affordable college education that will fast-track you into a rewarding career. We're building a better future for you. Contact the TCSG College in your area today or go to tcsg.edu. Welcome back, Georgia Dome. Eight touchdowns on the day for Buford by seven different players. Down 10 nothing at one point. They are now at 55-10, two minutes and 12 seconds away from their 11th state title. Connor Tarleton got the last two feet or so for that eighth score. And here's a look at what Buford has been able to accomplish over time. 2013 champs, that was their ninth in 13 years. They had one more previous to the Wood Simpson era. They have a state record 47 game win streak. They're on a 39 game win streak right now. So toward the end of region play next year, they could be setting a new state record. 208 and 14 
since 1999. That's about a 95% winning percentage. That doesn't make Woo. any sense. <laughs> These guys are winning at an unbelievable rate. Unbelievable. Monides kicks it into the end zone for the touchback. St. Pius will start from the 20 with 2.12 to go. And for Jess Simpson, it is one game at a time, 39 times straight. ATD, seven different players. Aaron Auer blew the curve. He's got two on the day on the two long pass plays. And Jess Simpson first met Dexter Wood his junior year at Marietta. He learned how to start a program from scratch, run and build a program. He went to Auburn, played for the squad there before an injury curtailed his playing career, was a student assistant for Pat Dye, Terry Bowden, learned from Jimbo Fisher, learned from other coaches like Trickett, Searles, and Callaway. And you see what he's been able to do here with Buford. Egan on the run one more time. White shirts chasing. Looks like he's going to get out of bounds. Gain of about five or six down to 148. He's had a lot of good mentors. Mm -hmm. He's got a good found foundation. And I'm really familiar with Buford living in North Gwinnett. And I mean, the team works hard. There's no other way to put it. Right. I mean, they, they work year round. They work hard. They, you know, push themselves. And that's what separates, you know, this their dynasty right now from pretty much any other that I've ever seen outside of what Valdosta 35 years ago. I mean, they're in a special time right now when it comes to winning, winning big. And St. Pius, Paul Standard has done a tremendous job with the St. Pius program over the last decade or so. Toss pitch coming the other way. First down past the 30 down to the 31 or two yard line. That'll move the sticks as we come up to a minute left in regulation. Ransom Klinger getting more carries as he comes to the left-hand side. You give St. Pius a lot of credit. You start 0-2, get a chance to play for a 4A title, and I know they want to win it all, but they've had a heck of a year, and they have no reason to hang their heads when they leave the Georgia Dome. None whatsoever. You know, with the legacy that George Maloof laid there at St. Pius, the, the state championship in 1968, Hall of Fame coach, with his coaching tree that we've talked about a little bit, Paul Standard understands what football means to St. Pius and what being a St. Pius Golden Lion means on a bunch of different levels. Incomplete pass to Joey Connors as we're at 20 seconds with a running clock here. One more play should do it here in the fourth quarter. Let's see if St. Pius snaps the football. They're not going to. Clock's going to run out. Buford wins title 11 in dominating fashion, 55 to 10. Time for Jess Simpson to celebrate winning yet another state championship. A nationally respected program built by Dexter Wood. Now Jess Simpson's taking over and adding to the continuous pedigree that Buford has. Tremendous championships, tremendous work ethic, and national respect for Buford for what they've been able to do in the last decade and a half. Yeah, and they've started from the bottom and moved on up. You know, they've taken every challenge that's come, whether it's single, double, triple, now 4A. And it starts with good coaching. Hadn't had many coaches at Buford over the years, but the ones that they have had have been absolutely fantastic. Experienced coaching staff all the yep. way across. And a tremendous effort for both sides. And Buford had to make their way the way that the quad A bracket was set this year. Eight of the top ten teams were on the left-hand side of the bracket. Marist, Griffin, Mary Persons, and Buford were all in the same mini bracket. And that's what you get for having played a successful 48 minutes. You get a state championship trophy, and the trophy case at Buford is a very long and shiny one. They've done a lot of hard work in the last 15 years or so. You know what else I like about Buford? I like the fact that they played McEachern this year. Mm -hmm. They played top competition. Yep. I'd love to continue to see Buford, even if they're in 4A, play different teams, particularly, you know, the higher classifications, because I think that's where eventually they're headed eventually over the next few years. Started with a game against Trinity Christian. Downstairs to Sam Crenshaw with a very special guest. 
here with Coach Dexter Wood. 11 state championships for the Beaufort Wolves. Thought about seeing that tonight. Well, it's hard to get your arms around it. You know, we just try to win one at the time. And for this senior group and for this particular class, this is a great win and a great season. Thoughts about the way this thing all, all unfolded for this team and getting here and, and playing against a tough St. Pius opponent tonight? Well, I think the key to this team is we were so great on defense, and then our line of scrimmage is so tough. Uh, but great senior leadership and obviously well coached, and that's all the ingredients for a championship team. I've seen a lot of Buford championship teams. You've been around them all. I think this one's a little more athletic than others. What do you think? Well, it's in the debate for the best, and probably from an athletic standpoint, I can't imagine there being a better one. Congratulations to you, Coach. Thank you, Sam. That is Coach Dexter Wood. The architect of what has been going on at Buford for the last decade and a half as St. Pius gets their runner-up trophy here in the Quad A classification. A tremendous effort by them. Buford had to prove it. Second round against Mary Persons. Quarterfinals against Marist. Last week against Cartersville in the semifinals. And St. Pius had a tremendous run themselves, having to come from behind to beat Woodward Academy in the semis, beat West Lawrence, East Side, and Fayette County before that. Had to get through reach in six quad A. They have to play Marist again now because of reclassification. So the Marist rivalry continues. And always remember, everywhere they go, every team they play, they have a bullseye on them. They're getting everybody's best. So that's what happens when you're the champions. They've lived up to the expectations. Buford surrounding the platform. It's time to toss it down to Mark Harmon for a very special moment for the folks on Sonny Drive. Thank you, John Nelson. Time now to present the 4A State Championship Trophy again to the Buford Wolves. And for that presentation, the executive director of the GHSA, Mr. Gary Phillips. Thank you, Mark. Coach, congratulations on a great season and yet another state championship. And this is from our people at Georgia Farm Bureau and our partners in this event. On behalf of Georgia Farm Bureau and Gwinnett County Farm Bureau, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Jess, I think it's okay if we keep meeting like this, isn't it? Yeah, this, uh, this is a great meeting to have, no doubt. Talk about what this means, 7 of 8, 11 overall. Uh, just such a special day. Uh, first of all, to Coach Standard and St. Pius, you guys are a class act, great competitors, and uh, we got so much respect for you. Uh, these seniors, uh, I'm so blessed. God has been good to me in coaching these young men. I, the coaches that I get to work with every day, the folks at Buford, our community, uh, this is special. Thank you guys so much. All right, Joshua, a senior, you found the end zone tonight. Talk a little about what this means to you and your teammates. This means a lot to our teammates. We poured countless hours in the summer just working hard. These coaches have poured so much into us. We, I wouldn't want to have done this with any other team. I love this team, and I love the community. Jordan, you're holding that championship trophy. You're holding the football. Raise it high and tell me how that feels. It feels amazing. You know, we've worked since last summer, you know, working for this moment, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just uh, – Exact. It's just what I wanted. I'm speechless. I can't even. I can't even talk. Honestly, I love this team. I love the family. I love the community that supports us, and uh, we got it done. How about back here in the back row? Talk about being a senior, going out on top, and winning once again. Oh, there's nothing better than that. I mean, coming out here, you know, we bust our butts year round. You know, we play for this community. We play for each other. It never gets old. You know, you gotta thank God. And uh, thank this community, they're out here after us. And you know, it's just it's a blessing. There's nothing better. David Currier ran one back with a punt. Talk a little bit about what the student body, what the fans, what the community support has meant to you. It leaves me speechless, man. They're awesome. Our Buford community is the best in the state and probably in the nation. And I can't thank them enough. I can't thank my coaches. We have the best coaching staff in the nation and they prepare us every week and it's just amazing. And I just want to, I'm going to miss all my teammates, man. I'm going to miss all y'all. Love all y'all. Well, very well said. Once again, congratulations to the Buford Wolves for the 11th time, the seventh time in the last eight years, state champions in the state of Georgia this year from Class 4A. Congratulations. And now it's time to check in with Raven Dorado and our GBB tailgate party.